last time before we got all the way locked into where we are now you guys fled from new wall you rescued the new wall or the jovan brothers after doing so you brought them back to Aridens. um but on your way bringing them back uh had to rendezvous with your friend fuck this and upon doing so saw that there was some note that tamriel um left depicting something with cryptic uh you guys then went back after Aridens decided that you were going to make it to the contravance holt seeking out the ink that orm has been wishing to have it was a three-day travel and on day two you guys ran back into these individuals that were dragonborns that seemed to have kind of tracked you somehow to this point a fight did not ensue you guys talked it out finding that fuck this seemed to be some sort of uh, individual that was possibly being looked for um some time ago um there was drawings and different depictions of him that was folded up in this wooden kind of satchel that was given to you and as you look through they said that you had about a week and they were going to follow you to get the dragon scale keep you guys then kept going towards the contravance holt where you guys found teddy just outside of just Ven, which was covered in snow looked like the entire city had fled except for him and maybe a few others you guys made your way through the contravance holt with teddy's help found the transcendent falls frozen over the entrance easily seen and upon making your way in you guys found that there were these cubes that were formed with this black ink or igor after doing so you guys made it in you found that there are huge pools and puddles of this ink inside this cavern system where orum had walked up with a vial you grab some and after doing so these huge cubes just dropped from the ceiling and this like black ink kind of just drips from the tops of this cavern you guys are here the small one seemed to have noticed you magnus as you are invisible but they don't seem to be moving or acting or really doing anything the large one has blocked the passage and you just see them just kind of stopped for the moment you notice that the large one seems to start lurching back as it has like some large pseudopod that it seems to be moving and now we're going to roll for initiative as you guys see that as you guys are moving around and it seems as if whatever this disturbance in the ink has formed or activated something 22 nine nine All right, let's see here. Oh, where's my notebook? That's the strong slime has plus five hey, decks. Seth, I'm like, where's no, my I notebook? And, and the alert feed, whatever. No. Plus 10 on initiative. <laughs> like, <I'm> like, <laughs> like, do you need these cards? Uh, no, not right now. Okay. Just put plus it 20 to initiative. Yeah. Plus 5,000. More than it would ever With advantage. <laughs> All right, sorry, didn't have this all. You can just take ten. All right. Base. All right. What'd you guys get? Twenty to twenty-five. Twenty-two. Ooh, Magnus. All right. We have fifteen to twenty. Ooh. Okay. Ten to fifteen. Eleven. All right. Five to ten? Nine. Five. Okay. So, Magnus, <laughs> as you are invisible and you kind of look around, you notice that the smaller one of this Icar kind of moving towards you very slowly, though. You see it. You notice it. What are you doing? I'm going to use my action to disengage. Okay. My bonus action to gain my flight speed. I'm going to move... All right. So at this point, you see this one. I'm still invisible, by the way. Yep. You see this one. Like it's still trying to follow you in some sort of way. This one, it just starts to 
slowly see how it skids across this acre right almost behind you but it stops big one it stands where it is you see this large pseudopod just forming that's the end of its turn and all three of those orm on to you uh okay uh i am i'm holding two vials uh one in one's full one's not it's the cheap one that's full I'll look at the sign of greed I'll look at these things I'll look at the pit i'm gonna look at greed i'm gonna look at vials i'm gonna look at the things instead of going for a second vial i'm just gonna pour cheap vial into the the good, good vial, vial. Yep. cork that shit Boom. i'm gonna play it safe stash that um and i yeah and then i'm going to assume that would put i'm not currently in its reach yes uh you're not sure oh okay i don't know it's oh i'm within 10 feet though yep mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Do I have an action? Or is pouring shit an action? An object, I'll say you were already there. Yeah, but I'll say you were already, there. Yeah, I'll say the you're already there. So I'll say you quickly as it's happening. Bonus action. Okay, all right, that's fine. Yep. But then yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try something out here. I got the fucking things to burn. I'm gonna walk up and I'm gonna smack or attempt to smack it with uh, my uh, with my staff. Yep. Uh, I don't have advantage. Yes. Uh, oh, 17 yeah. 17 to hit? That hits. 18 to hit. Cool. And I'm going to use uh, a charge to deal lightning damage to it. I want to see what happens. This is going to be 2d8. Get it. Uh, 8, eight plus 7 is 15. Plus uh, four, so nineteen. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, as you, and and how much of that lightning damage? Uh, seven of that. Seven. Of, so <clears throat> as you kind of you hit it. Yeah, with staff. You you slam into it, and as you see it, kind of like sparks inside, and it illuminates inside. And as it does, you see like these strands, and the blackness changes, and this immediately just kind of goes transparent. The black just fades and it just disperses and then you see just this lightning crackle through it and it seems for a moment to like seize and you see it almost like shrink for a second and then <coughs> almost like recourse back but it doesn't it looks as if it almost like restrains itself in some way and the damage really inflicts upon it you see this lightning just <laughs> it just concuss through it okay. it does more than you think eat all right Woo. uh now, I'm, I'm definitely within its reach now, and oh, now I'm good. All right, so as that happens, you see one of its arms now reach out, and it's going to attack you. This is a reaction. Yep. Uh, that's going to 23. Uh, Actually, it's 25. Um, It'll do 12 points of bludgeoning damage, and then... Uh, do, do, do. The target is war. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use my reaction um, to Eldritch Escape. All right. You're also going to take 13 acid damage from the hit. One in addition to the... What does Eldritch Escape do? Uh, that's me teleport. Okay. I'm, I'm going to teleport. I think it's up to 60 feet. Um, well, as you get hit, I need you to give me a um, strength check. Because as this pseudopod like, hits you, you notice that it kind of like grabs onto you. What am I rolling again? Uh, rolling strength, strength, strength is a grapple. So like 12 plus 11 point passive? 13. 13? Yep. So 12 plus 13. Right. Uh, uh, and then I'm pulling us. Mm hmm. Yeah. Could it be save. save or athletics? No, it's a. No, it'd be a. Uh... I give you strength because you're pulling. I think. Yeah, it is, but I'm, I'm just saying it'd be strength. You're like pulling away from. I think I think the check. The thing Eight. pulling. That big. Eight. Yeah. No, so you become grappled. Teleport away. Okay, so in a moment you just. Yeah. And you just blink away. Um, where uh, are you going? Sixty feet. And 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I'm gonna go in 
Uh, this opposite corner here. Okay, now you also take three more as you, like, feel the grapple kind of pull onto you. You feel three more acid damage. All right, that is the end of that. Life onto you. Okay. I'm guessing this entire thing is just taken up. I can't get through there at all. Yep. Okay. Now, I'll say your bludgeoning attack... Didn't seem to have do, um, done as much damage as you. Uh... The bludgeoning did, but the electric did. Mm. God, they like me. Got force, radiant, and necrotic. That's all I got. Uh. Can Paul Lightning work in a cave? Yeah, yes. I can conjure storm or I can use the one that's already. I Yeah. I think I think the only stipulation and he Okay. We're gonna cast Spirit Guardians. I have to double check. That's the fifteen foot radius around me. Oh. And bonus action. What does that do? If it starts its turn or comes into it, it takes damage. And it's already yeah. in it. Mm-hmm. So once it has turn, it hit. Bonus action, not anything. I don't got any bonus action, so that's the move. That, that's needs. my turn. All right, on to you, fuck this. <clears throat> so you said that this one was still forming it seems you said no, it was it's formed, like forming but it seems as if it's like got some large like pseudopod that it's reaching back with it's formed it's landed and it's like came together and now it's like got some large appendage that it seems to be like reaching back with that's toward us or away from us? um i would say it's almost going towards the life from what you Then, I guess I'll just take my chance. Slam into it. You slamming? Slam, slam and jamming. I'll go ahead and use my very first action surge. I'm going to attack for it. Ooh. And smite with each one. All right, so you're going in. <laughs> All right. Just nuke it. First one is a natural 20. Ooh. Okay, roll, roll the next one. Okay. Yeah, one crit. How many crits you get? Six plus nine to hit. You're going into the, the, bi the big one, right? Yes. Fifteen to hit the big one. Okay. Um. Yeah, let me double check here. Yeah. You notice it's not hard to hit. One crit, one hit. Eighteen plus nine. Yep. Hit. Another no, no, no. Oh, nice. wow. Nice. Nine crits. Oh, jeez. Oh, this is great. Right. Let's roll the crits first. Mm. Seven, so thirteen. Magical slashing damage. Okay. So 26 magical slashing damage. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All the smite damage. Let's, I'm going to do, <clears throat> do a level 2 smite on this one. All right. 5. 12. Okay, so 36. Second crit. I was going to say, wouldn't the, the smite damage also be doubled? Yeah. It would be 24. Yeah. It would have been the 24 plus 26. Okay. okay. The next one, so unfortunately, 50. was a 1. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Did you it. also get all the tassels off your fucking axe, too? No, no he didn't. <laughs> no. He's gonna do enough damage. <laughs> yeah. So that's another, so that's eight, another 13, another 26. Yeah. Right? yeah. Slashing damage? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Let's do another level two. Another. Another oh, one. Slight. Another one. That's ten. Oh wow. Sixteen. So thirty. Another thirty-two. Thirty-two. My damage. And then I have two more regular. God, two more is, regular. is my damage really doubled? Yeah. 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 It's all. It's Jesus. all. It's all dice. Yeah, you my double God, dice. this man. Yeah. I'm just gonna stay cool on this one. We'll do. So that's eight magical slashing, and ten magical. So another. Hang eight. on. Two more smites. Hang on. Did he just after you after that one, you see this. <laughs> <laughs> you see this 
large like pseudopod that starts just slouching and dripping no. down. And as you're just wham, wham, just wailing into this with your newly acquired axe, yeah. tails flying, you literally just cover yourself in this like just ooze. And as you do so, the black ichor just starts spewing out in almost like a like a balloon popping. It just and the ichor inside and the gelatinous just just starts flooding around. It just flows out, and you see it does nothing. <laughs> just, Balans are fucking awesome. <laughs> and now you you just see like this large Dude, oozed oh area God. just entirely <laughs> taken away. You walk upon oh, it. No, 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 I, I would say if what you cube, wanted the cubes feel fear. <laughs> you you would still have another yeah, attack in your now? movement if you wanted because you you would. I mean, you already rolled them, but uh, you killed it before. So if you wanted yeah. to, I would still like to take, you know. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, he, he can get to this one and yeah, smack he it. he did literally. That last attack almost, could hit that one. He did almost 100 damage in he those. Just two attacks. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Um, I was expecting way more. No, he did 108. That's nuts. Yeah, your work's a, D, a D12, right? That was 108 for two attacks. Yeah. You did 50 and then 26. And, and then the other two was like 18. Yeah, it was 18 or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then it was 32, so it would have been doubled. So, yeah. yeah. Whew. You hear Teddy, go, guys! <laughs> I'm just like, I want some more. <laughs> All right, so... I'm just like, we can going for more. I'm gonna, He's like, <laughs> I'm gonna stay within a 10. ten. You don't have reach anymore. Does yeah. the great axe not have nope. reach? No. no. Oh, my bad. The, yeah. the juxtaposition bet uh, between <laughs> you as a paladin just like, rah, yeah. and then going, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining yeah. just like skipping, like, this is the best day of my life. The <laughs> frog and the, the good. Uh, 13, I was scared until I murdered that thing. Hit. Yep, that hits. A, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> like, like, Three, so that would be eight, eight magical slashing damage on this this okay. guy here. Smite it too. No, no, I'm no. saving the smites. <laughs> and it just to... reforms again. The trap is Phase two. It's now red. A rune <laughs> on the floor emits. <laughs> no. It's not the slime the dragon. You good? Um. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Okay. Well. It is now back on to you, Magnus. Eat. Well, As now you look around, you get out now. You just yeah. see Icker and this like gelatinous darkness forming on the floor that's kind of seeping out. But other than that, fuck, this seems to have dealt I'm with it. I'm gonna get within thirty feet of him. Five, okay. ten, fifteen, twenty, five, thirty. I want thirty within, yeah. like, oh, within him. Yeah, within him. Five, ten, it's fifteen, like, twenty, thirty. Here. Guess got a new paperweight. Okay. Now I'm going to use my bonus action to shove him five feet back. You okay. Willingly, you can willingly just let that happen because force movement. Yeah, no yeah, you can't do it. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you've been shoved five feet back. Okay. And I'm going to fucking burp shoot this motherfucker. Plus six. Seventeen. Yep. Next attack, sharpshoot two. But since I can use sharpshooter damage isn't double. It's not double. Oh, so no. since I can use my react. It's on the smaller one though, right? The, yeah, it's this on the is, yeah, it's this one right You're gonna do base four tech force is nineteen damage. Yes. It so it doesn't do as quite as much damage. You see the arrows just strike into it, but it's still enough. This one. But magical, it has resistance to magical piercing damage? Uh, something within that. You're not quite sure. There seems to be magic infused as your arrows strike. You see them almost like light up and this ichor just kind of okay, like well dissolves within them. Now that I have a little bit more movement, I only move like 15. Now, as you guys are kind of moving around in here, as you move past those pile of bones, you just for a moment hear... I was here. And you kind of... Well, it's actually you. You look past, and you're not quite sure exactly where the voice came from, but you move on. At the end of your turn, you see that the other one, 
Um, it's just gonna stand still. You see a large pseudopod kind of forming from one of the sides, but it doesn't move. Oh. It just, just bounce. Wait, is there like anything remaining? Is there like stuff? Give me a perception or investigation, depending on what you're doing. Are you looking or are you like? I'll search. I'll search. I'll okay. Search, yes. So give investigate. me investigation. What are you looking for? Just like anything that was in the big one. 22. Uh, you do see what looks to be some shiny things that have fallen out. You're not quite sure exactly what they are. Well, some of the shiny things in my bag. Not even look what they are yet. We'll figure it out later. As you're, as you're kind of figuring through, you feel some coin. You feel some other things. You're not exactly not, not sure. Not quite like a good old battle. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's the end of his. Uh, or... Hey, that was, a, that was my free arm dig action. Okay? So you now, as you guys are all <laughs> looking around now, you guys do notice that, like you saw before, there are writings, some drawings on the wall. Some are, you know, in ink that are standing out quite predominantly in this, like, red stone it, in, wrote in this black ink. But other than that, there only seems to be this one cube remaining. It's just kind of sitting between these two pools in the middle of this room. Holy shit, we had advantage on that one too. That was the one, the small one was fairy fired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it, anyway, it, it was. It did, did not matter. Forgot about that. Yeah, you're right. So that it was, was worse. <laughs> I, I, it's also possible that I took damage and I forgot I was concentrating on spell, so I might have lost the concentration. I, uh, well, that, sure. You, that, yeah, that sure. happened. You did get hit. Yeah. Uh, fucking, I don't. Boy, uh, fucking, I'm going to... You, Teddy. So what's, what's going on in there? We're dying. We're leaving. That's what we're doing. Leaving. Uh, I will also... Sure, I will just be side-eyeing this shit. Uh, I'm looking at this cube, seeing if it's doing anything. Uh, it doesn't look like it's doing anything, so I will also... Look to see if there's anything laying around on the ground, valuable wise. You look around, and in the middle, you do see that there's quite a bit of things. You're not quite sure. There's like a mound mm -hmm. of ick and oh. ooze. You're gonna have to, you know, maybe dig through some of it. But you could probably, if you, Damn. you know, uh, damn. Then yeah, uh, I will. I'll I'll rummage through the pile. All right, give me an investigation check. I have it prepared, but you're already doing it, so. What the fuck am I investigating? Yep. Fucking four. Four? Can I yeah. use my mage hand to give him an assist You kind of dig through. As you do so, you find what looks to be some sort of uh, doll. You're not quite sure it's covered in black but it looks to be some sort of doll you keep on digging and there's what looks to be a like a tankard um you find a few coin you're not quite sure maybe five ten gold um but you keep digging and you know there's more in there it's just you're gonna have to either spend some more time or maybe you know dig a little better okay. Um, and I'm just gonna be like, we killing the last one? As you guys all look over, it's just kind of sitting there. You see this pseudopod just kind of dripping to the right as its appendage kind of just sits out, but it doesn't seem to be moving at all. It's almost like in a standstill. Uh, I think it's like frozen. I'm just gonna ignore it. I think it's a statue now. Okay. So, the other thing is, is we can, so... Gotta try and kill this thing, so then we're alone, and then we can thoroughly investigate the room. Uh, or, I mean, yeah. But what if we kill it, and that triggers more of them to come back? Uh, the other thing I was thinking about doing is I got more vials. I was worried because the, the last time I grabbed a vial, it spawned some of these things. But if we all huddle on that side of the room, grab a vial, then we can just... Uh, yeah, let's look through this mud pile and then go. You mean, like, you go there, we huddle here, and then you... 
No, I was I was gonna say we all go into that <coughs> corner of the room. Oh, and, and, tell, and, and just like patch. And they just abandon him there. No, Teddy Teddy can come in. Teddy can come in. Alright, so So after a moment so, Teddy just kind of peers in. What's are going on? Are we what? Are in, yeah, he in, was going to I'll say, or, we, you guys are connect freely. Unless you guys really want to, or we go into it, we can go back into initiative. He was going to teleport cast, anyway. Pack a magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he wanted to come with you guys. I'll, I'll go ahead and use an action to... I'm going to use Detect magic. Divine Sense. I Detect I magic? Use it. Um, you, <laughs> Where are we at, HP-wise? You wait a moment. I have 30 HP. You cast Detect Magic. Um, you do see that... There are some illuminations that are happening where the large cube was. It seems as if there's possibly some more I magic. I reach my items. hands in the goopish. <laughs> All right. I will assist him. Goop out the goop uh, stuff. Then I will also be over there, um, and I'm going to cast Aura of Vitality. Uh, and which I'm at max HP, so I'm good. Uh, we hurt. You're missing a little bit. A little bit. Okay. So I'm going to... Take a minute to serve. Okay, so as you reach in, you pull out what look to be like these crystal lenses. They're covered, but they almost look to be like a single monocle with like different lenses that shift. It's kind of covered and gooped up, but possibly if cleaned. Or, yeah, Yes, so you and as you see. Very fine, clear crystals, almost um, like some maybe some sort of instrument that allows you to maybe see something better. You're not quite sure. You look it over. Wait, like see further, or like a magnifying glass? I, I, you don't know. I put it all. I kind of like this. Is there anything? You kind of look around, and you don't really notice anything initially, but it's definitely magical. Put in the bag. All right, you put it in the bag. Um, you go through, you look around, and you also notice um, there's a couple of what look to be potions inside. You see a bag that's like kind of dissolving. Um, you grab those as well. Uh, you notice that there is two of them. You see one that is almost like a light greenish, and one that is kind of like a dark brown. What did I grab earlier, by the way? Oh, you kind of look. Um, do you have any? You give me a, I guess like an alchemy check. There it is. Give me a nature's checker. You like this doll and tankard I have, Matt? Magnus, you oh. notice you grabbed about eleven gold, and ten silver. Um, you look through the rest and you see that there's some what sort of scroll, but it's kind of ripped and torn. You look at it. You start kind of going through, and it seems to be some sort of spell, but not being too inclined in magic too much. You're not quite sure exactly what it is, um, but you do notice that it has something to do with uh, some sort of elemental or something. You just get a very base depiction. You're not quite sure. Um, now. So two things. The roll, and he wants to know if there's the things he's wanting are. Would you doll and tanker? Uh, the doll, um, the doll does not seem to be the tankard. As you kind of look, does. Like, I'm like, um, yep. Doll, no. Tankard, yes. And what is the rule I'm doing? For Wait, you? is tankard? Tankard's like a fucking. Uh, uh, cup, cup, yeah. Uh, give me yeah. a give me a nature's check. Nature. Yeah. Or, do you have any background in alchemy? Or anything that would maybe. Is it the tank of destruction? Is it a so. weapon? I don't believe I have. Like that fucking that wow weapon? weapon. Yeah. So nature instead. I have wow rolls. You're gonna say if I had alchemy? Yeah. Raging. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. You don't drink things. No, I don't. <laughs> like... Twenty-two. Nature check. Um. I'm write tanker down. The first white green one, that? you think has to tank. possibly do with some Art. sort of poisoning. You look at the brown one, and you immediately notice this from being around the region um, and just seeing them in trademarks that this is a potion of climbing. Uh, Magnus, uh, 
comes up with his spell scroll, has no idea what it is. Have this magic tanker, have no idea what it is. I'm gonna give the drunk anchored spellcasters. Which drunk? The, the the dwarf. Hey, that was. Can one, I attune to this tanker real time. quick to figure out what it does? <laughs> it would take, take an hour. You, you try and you one sit. Time. Nothing I'm seems to uh, really good. happen. Are you talking about me? Do I recognize this spell? Um, you wait a few moments and then you can kind of read it a little bit better. Okay. You you wait. Give me an Arcana check. Uh. Um, this looks to be. You're not quite sure at first, and then you really look in. This seems to be some sort of protection from elementals. You take a moment, and if you take about 15, 20 minutes, you kind of read through and you realize that this scroll encloses you in an invisible barrier. It extends, you know, about five to 10 feet out from you, and it lasts five minutes that prevents elementals from entering or affecting anything within this cylinder. So it's basically like a warding from elementals. Yep. Now, a creature can overtempt to overcome the barrier by doing a charisma check. But aside from that, it seems to um, pretty much ward off. Now, the tankard, you notice as you look, it has a liquid in it, though it's clear. It looks to be possibly water. I mean, um, like, like have a, if I poured it out, it and like pours. And what, what does it refill itself? What school of school okay, so I don't pour it all magic out. does? Well, you poured it all out. I, no, I, I wanted to like tip it. Well, then so how would you know up. if it refilled itself? Then I want to fucking, I want to fucking see if it comes up from like. I want to go. Mm, mm. Okay, fucking so well, be a little more, more careful next time because you would have said that. Just... Like, ah! That's what you just did. You just were like, I'm going to tip it all out. Yeah, I mean, you literally just said it. You need to work on your object work. Yeah. <laughs> what schools of magic did you do these things give off? It's free, but it wasn't magic. Um, <laughs> like, abjuration. Enchantment. Um, from the glasses seems to be some sort of enchantment magic. And then what was the other one? You turn into I do have resistance uh, to poison. The... Turn into a cube. Same. <laughs> Same as well. Both seem to be some sort of enchantment magic. I'm going to drink. Whatever. I'm not actually. I'm just pour out whatever. I don't know what it. All right. Pour it out. You can pour it. Pour it out. Put some water for my water skin in it. Okay. Pour it out. Okay. And then I'm gonna pour water. In okay. And I'm gonna drink it. And see if mm. the magical tanker does anything to it. You're you're just gonna do that. I you, resisted the poison as damage. As soon as you I drink it, it if it seems to just be really refreshing. Like if anything, it almost seems to wick away any sort of like. Are you saying this cleans the liquid I put in it? No, it doesn't clean. It maybe it, it almost from what have you had any have you have you had any alcohol recently? Would, would we like to just no. try and then you don't really notice anything. Specifics of this? Or we can take the short rest at Percy's. Just doing a little experiment now. Okay. Is there anything? Uh, hey, life, is there anything magic in the cube that's still alive? I think the cube is itself it, is magic. Is it within... I don't know. Uh, is, it, is it magic in the cube? No, not from what you can tell. Nope, not from what I can tell. You see that there are some things in there, some oh, bones yeah, and whatnot, the but... Broke it. I'm going to use Divine Sense. Celestial Fiend or Undead. And 60. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Like ah, shit. Oh, he's like, oh, fuck. There goes my plan. He doesn't see it. Yeah, you sense something. You're not quite sure if it's celestial or undead. You gain that it's almost in like this bridge between the two. You kind of look around. You don't see anything. But as you look around, you notice that there are in some of these depictions this constant man. And as you look, you kind of walk around. 
and you're kind of trying to sense where this originates. I cast Eyes of the Grave. I know the location of, of any undead within. Doesn't seem to be any exact location. You cast it, there's nothing. It was just the room. You kind of work. It could be a celestial. You kind of well, look around. It was a bridge between the two. So it's somewhere in between. I'm going to switch to planar vision. What a multi planar vision. Look around. You look. You oh, see God, just see. a faint. <laughs> like, a, like a faint. Um, thin. Almost like. Skeleton of a husk. Of what would be like a seven foot man. But instead, but instead of the bones, you see them almost like barely covered with like this thin sinew. You kind of see it, and for a minute, you're like, well, and then you double take, and then about uh, 50, maybe 60 feet clear on the other side of the room through the gelatinous, you barely can see this. And you kind of look through the other side, it kind of sits there, it's back turned to you. You see no facial features or any you know, depiction of a race or anything no hair and with it. it turns for a moment and yeah, now noticing that it possibly sees you it just kind of moves along the wall and you see its hand just kind of drag alongside and you see some of the etchings of words kind of glances out of its vision and then it just fades and then you wait a moment and it kind of like re-emerges about 20 feet on the other side of the right wall to you and it just keeps walking for a moment. It just drags its hands and then it stops. And you see like just dark bottomless pits of eyes that are just kind of like sunken in. You wait a moment and it can see that, you know, you're following it and tracking it. And then it waits and then it just poofs. Blackness just kind of obstructs for a moment and then it gets closer about maybe 20 feet from you and you hear almost like an echoed voice what what why what why why are you what why are you here yeah we got sort of multiplanar yes, creature yeah. in this Tell room us to switch to the thing yeah, switch to your multiplanar vision and those who have it take a look at this guy he's about 20 feet to the right did you guys to the right that of me. can Which see way, it. like this like say, this way it's, it's about right over see there it. You kind of all, for a moment, so, take a look, and as it does so, it now almost, like, seems to tell that it's being watched. And do you respond? Can we, can we speak to it? Can you? I don't think you. we've tried. It's speaking to you. And now, who walked by the piles of bones earlier? Yeah, man. You hearing this voice you sounds very, one? very oh, similar oh. to the voice that came from the bone piles. Just bone it, guy. just it, it almost your... seems echo. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. We to were on attempts to speak to this. I said we were um, coming for some of that magical ink, or so we thought. Magical. <laughs> it's you hear it kind of start to speak. It's him. It's his. His. He made it. It's from him. Don't. Who? Him. You just see these, like, almost like pointy, knifey fingers, but made of, like, muscle. Just kind of extend towards the walls. Here, 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 here. Is he here now? No. Look. Here, him. He. You. He made it. You see his fingers, he kind of points back. Him, he, there, he made it. Is he pointing to? Or him. You have it. You, yes, 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 yes. He's the maker? No. Who, he, he made that. That, that he made, made, made. And then he points to the wall and you see his fingers once again. He, 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 made, made, and, 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 and. Made this? And you see it, it kind of just, just teleports like five, ten feet, just almost like black. Just 
forming in shadows. Yes! And he points towards the wall, and then he slowly, like, crinkles his finger back. We have, like, the blood of Cthulhu for tattoo ink, so... That's like, nice. The light path's, like, half the conversation right now. What are, He's just what are you fuck. doing here? Just kind of looks around, confused for a second. Watching. Watching, collecting. Watching. Observing. Watching. Collecting what? Those, those, those who have it, have it, have it. Could you show us the collection? Can you made? Just. Voice of the book. Wait a moment. Many. Collected, collected, collected. It kind of goes towards you and puts its hand just above your shoulder. See, 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 see. What's your name? Yeah, I'm already just like, mm, I'm ready to leave now. <laughs> What's your name? If it doesn't answer, give me a persuasion check. Wait, can't all the hearers or just people with... I can see you it. You guys can hear it. Okay, but I you guys can you can't see it. You can't see it. I know, I thought it was just people who can see him can hear him. So I'll... 19. You hear like this demonic like twisting of like a words that kind of just drown out and like just like twists of verbiage. You see Abyssal, the hand just Abyssal. right Abyssal. above. I wouldn't even say either. Almost like just just like just letters like I would say imagine abyssal but just pissed off language just you know some random verbiage that it's just saying in almost like a tone that it's confused in almost like it's not even quite sure what it's saying maybe even confused German <laughs> it's looking back at you now with its hand right above Magnus's shoulder what is name 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 it what do you call yourself or other people on you the lost lost mem mem memory of Relinoff. From, from, from. And his hand kind of points out. And you see towards the black pool. Other side, side, side. He upside down? You say it. There doesn't seem to be... <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, doesn't, he doesn't get that right. What the fuck is he upside down? What are you doing on a rock? <laughs> I mean, he technically... So who cave. wants to dive in the pool of ink? You guys all turn and look at the pool of ink and you hear just the bubbling of the... Now, you remember when you were next to the ink, it seemed to be like of burning char of ember, but it wasn't hot. And you uh, saw it was boiling. So you are a piece of memory? Fractured, fractured, fracca, fractured. From Relinoff. A long time ago. Draconius? Him, him, him. Him. And the fingers start just pointing on the wall. There's nothing else that we can see. On you the look walls. on the walls like, and you see words. Just you, words. You start, you want to read oh, the words? So, like, words we didn't see before. Now that you have time that seem to, you know, yeah. go around. You guys take a moment. You look along the walls. And as you do so, you see almost in like. A poem or maybe a phrasing. How it felt to be victorious. Friends and comrades around me. We saved everyone. But now, so lonely. How it felt to be needed. 
The power resist I could not. The power I will need again. The power sealed away, but almost all have forgot. Loved ones lost, I am no longer a man. For greed I have chose betrayal. I must remain, for now there is no going back. You take a moment and you see that most of this is wrote. And even in some spots carved and then wrote over in this ink. You turn back and you see as you've taken about five to ten minutes kind of walking around the room now. The cube's still unmoving. You see this demonic large thinned creature. See, see, see now. What I know. No, no. You see it kind of take a step back from you all, and then another step back, heading back towards the pole. You see it in a moment, and then it takes one step, and you see its foot just slowly submerge into the ink. You see Teddy. Hello. What are you guys looking at? What is that? What is that voice? You see it once more, just its other foot submerge and then it start just sinking down into this black ink hey would you be mad if i took another vial of that ink there's no response it takes itself and it submerges down you see its fingers grip the edge and its eyes go down and the dark just hollowed husks just sink beneath and you see the th thin like muscle sinew of its fingertips just slide off the edge and just submerge Okay, we're just gonna like never mention that ever again, right? I'm gonna switch like, back period. to just like normal, like dark vision. Mm -hmm. I'm just like huddled, like crying in a fetal position in the corner over here. <laughs> and there's, yeah. one, there's nothing like, is the pool, the ink pool, is it? It seems to be just softly bubbling. Nothing's changed. Do you want to jump in? I'm gonna run risk taking another file. I already got my tattoo. All wrong. Yeah, but what if, like, there's, like, something under that? I mean, yeah, I'm afraid this guy's going to just reach out and grab it through the bone. <laughs> like, yeah, like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Like, I'm good. Shadow that, nah. So that's, if, yeah, I got the vials, but I, otherwise I'm pretty sure. Yeah. What are you getting these tattoo, this tattoo for? Uh, it'll make me real good at punching stuff. I would just claw tattoo. Above table, he's wanted it for, like, Oh, I know. The entire campaign. Since, There's like, other tattoos. Since like the yeah. second. Yeah, it's pretty early on. Day. It's pretty early on. <laughs> the second <laughs> session. The second yeah. session. Session two. It's like, it's what is Elder Claw tattoo? Yeah. Something like that. Uh, but yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's other tattoos. Other things that. Yeah. A little creeped out. You see Teddy. Bye. By what? What? Where it's do we? Not, it's just, it's just, don't worry about they it. They saw some stuff. He kind of just looks. Yeah. You ever speak to a nightmare? No, but I've heard yeah. just random tales of this place, and that's that's why I never come here. We're ready to go. I'm ready to go, and you guys kind of look and. Yeah, the temperature's dropping. You guys can see your breath easily. And what once was cold, you guys can tell. And here on the outside, even though you guys aren't that far underground. Hopefully, Percy's is still there. Uh, yeah, they, they probably would have. They're, it's the capital. The is the capital. Yeah, but oh. he also has a giant. <laughs> so, the ice sure that I'm sure. Oh, that's a good point. Hey, he's, got, I mean, back going. he's got magic. I'm ready to go. Yeah, we're not going to stay. Yeah, alright. You guys want to kill that? See what that's in it? Um, I think I'm just... Okay. Cube there. What did he ever do to us? So that... Legitimately, I don't... Uh, he's the only... I'm the only one who got punched by it, so... Yeah. Like a horror... Yeah, but you broke him. Horcrux of me. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Broke him. Yeah, a little bit. Hey, right, Teddy. Go. Yep. We're ready to go. All right, well, how are we going? Uh, I got I got a robe with some cool patches. Cool, yeah. let's go. All right, put a huddle up. He kind of 
goes in, you guys huddle up, you get close to each other, and then in a moment... I, I yell... Uh, see you later, Girth Pat. And in a moment, you guys, yeah. you guys feel the transition very quickly, and in a quick moment, are just brought right back to Percy's in his basement. Now, in his, we'll say, basement cellar, it is warmer. You notice that Alberzine. <laughs> is protected by some sort of magic. When you guys came here the first time, the snow had melted on the inside. Yeah. So for the most Let's part... Let's on that safe they got down here. Make sure it's not going... You guys we'll go to the center. You guys wait a few moments, and you guys... Well, you you can just go jaunt off. It's not very far. You kind of go up. You go down one of the right corridor where you know the vault to be, and it is completely encased in ice. It is now receded... or. Exceeded outside of the vault and is now starting to make it beyond just the narrow corridor in which he led you down in that is completely iced off Percy does not seem to be down here and from what time of day you are unsure that it is You notice that the vault in which though it is completely encased the gem still blows inside very strong This was this was this was Elemental gem? Seasonal yeah, gem. Seasonal gem. gem. This yeah, was a, yeah. a seasonal gem, yep. Yeah, sending prepared? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's either that or walk upstairs, but we don't, don't know what time of day it is. Wait, what? You guys, the last you knew when you guys went in, it was night, Um, but you guys had been in the cave for probably at least two-ish hours. Can get a short yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll see you guys got short rest investigating all that, doing all that. You got short rest during you guys doing right. all that investigation. From here, from like from the bottom, from where we are, up to the top of the, like into the shop, how how long is this? Um, you guys really don't know. You guys have never gone up. Oh wait, yes you did. You guys did go back up and forth. Um, it's about two stories. It's a narrow corridor. That's how a stairwell. How many feet from here to that? About forty. I point out, cast message, like, hey, Percy, we're down here. You wait a moment. He uh, responds, uh, we got a couple customers, but I'll be down in a second. You wait about five minutes. You guys mander about, just do whatever, resting, cleaning gear. You hear the door creak and hang on, hang on. And then it slams. You hear his quick footsteps hasten down. I'm glad to hear you're okay. What? Where have you been? Things are, things are going crazy. He points over to his vault. I don't know what to do with it. You try putting it in a bag of holding? I That's... can't get to it. Oh, is it like iced in as yes, well? Yes, this oh, whole I... thing. Yeah, so it's the doors like... opens, but this is ice there. Imagine oh, like shit. a almost like a twenty foot by twenty foot, just huge vault that is just now filled with just ice that keeps growing and snow. It just keeps perpetuating. Imagine like a freezer that keeps building up that frost on it. You know, it just keeps going. Now, as well, you, we, we, we have the time, we use this. He kind of, he kind of looks at you. Um, there's a meeting. The the hex god. Did, did you hear of the, what happened to the chases? The storm chases. They went to land then. They all died. Oh. They sent a full platoon, about twenty five, half of their main fleet. Something stopped them before they could even make it to the storm. There's a meeting that's being held. Alanda, she contacted me. He kind of takes his hat off and wipes his face. I've been trying to keep my cool, but guys, it's actually getting serious. Yeah. There's a group of Warforged that have... Well, they've rebelled. Something's happened. A town right outside. They, they waited about a week. They weren't given a place to stay. He kind of walks around. Oh shit, we were supposed to ask for that, weren't we? Were we? We mentioned it to Percy, the person, the guy who told us to. For... But we didn't actually, we, we mentioned that the place had happened, but we didn't actually like, say anything. They went and, um,. We don't know what they're doing. He kind of looks... They've... They've all... Left. 
have gone somewhere, and I don't know where. We couldn't speak to Mekthar. We know he's their leader. They sent word, and um, the Red Council didn't listen. They didn't hear anything, or they just chose to not do anything. Now, this storm, guys, towns are filling up. A media is almost full. Food starting to shorten. Snow is caving in towns. We need to have a plan. There's a meeting that Orlando wants everyone to attend. She specifically mentioned you all as well as some members of the Unbroken Allegiance. Many are grouping in the media. Yeah. They're she devising a plan. Is that where the meeting is? Yes, at the Capitol building. The Red Council is supposed to make an appearance, and supposedly they're asking for help on devising a plan. I guess they thought the storm chasers were going to be able to handle it, but they could not. Supposedly, well, there's some sort of force that is stopping any sort of individuals from making it to the actual storm, fighting us, controlled by some sort of ice or cold elementals. At least that's what we have stories of. Blue-eyed creatures coming to life, animating. These things, if we don't do anything, the whole eastern part of Abazine will be engulfed in a storm. We need to know what is happening. I'm exhausted. I've been trying to keep the shop and all my appearances up and work with Dennis Steen and those that I can, but... I haven't seen Dennis Dean in two weeks. We haven't been in contact. I don't know what's happening with the rest of the group. Our plans are falling apart. We need to know what this storm is and how to stop it. Your friend Gildor, do you know anything more about this gem? It seems to be the cause or the root of all of this. So, Gildor, from my understanding, was more or less the source of the gem. Thunderbolt was one of the people that was working on it as well. There's one more individual that we know of. Uh, uh, I believe his name is Teldris, Life's Hero's nephew. Uh, he worked on the project as well. He is our understanding the best lead in dealing with this problem. Uh, unfortunately, he's two continents away. In our... he, he's in Audrey. That's the he's in Audrey being held captive by Harriet. Uh, he's also wanted here because he's also like the link to these like yeah the like, Red uh, fucking experiments essentially. Yeah, the, the Red Council probably won't. Uh, in fact, when we first met him, he was running for his fucking life. Um, and so we were currently working on going to get him. Um, yeah, I don't know. That might be a better solution. So we... I don't know. No idea. The meeting is in a day. I don't have a way to get us to Audrey that fast. Yeah, we had to leave High Peak. There's an individual that's doing it. Yes, the continent. Well, that sounds like a lead. It's a lead. How do we get to him? Get to High Peak. And he can get you there. But we'll, we've that's been what told. Jerom told us? Is that his name? No, it was the... the Give up. Oh yeah, there's also there's also like a secret society based on fucking hard houses. Yeah. Anything about that? Is that a different secret society? Uh, I'm not a part of that, but I've heard 
rumors, we've bought information from what I believe known as the 52. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That'd be uh, it. And that's when Girth, he kind of speaks up. Yeah, that's, I guess, what I'm a part of. I Something. <laughs> he kind of holds up a card and... I got this. He kind of... So, how do we... Maybe that popcorn. He kind of starts walking around. How do we attack this, um... Problems? Red Council is going to be seizing part of the elections if we possibly do nothing. Those start in about six weeks. If we don't have at least a foothold in those, the elections will be lost turn of next year. We will only have a month or two for any elections or representatives to try and sway the people. And on top of that, we have a storm that we have no true answer to yet. And, and the one answer to that problem lies far away from here. Everything's going great. Oh. Well, good news. I owe you an, uh, an alpha direwolf pelt. Finally got my ink, baby! Oh! Yeah, good news. And it's just absolute bit day. <laughs> well, that's one thing at oh, least. And there's like an Eldric fucking fracture, fracture of like fucking Gretonius, like chilling in a cave. Yeah, that was terrifying. What? Yeah. You ever, you ever like wake up and you can't move because you're paralyzed? And there's just this creature looming there approaching you slowly? Yeah. Imagine that. You said a fracture of a memory. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Lost memory? What he said? Did it fight you? No. no. Kind of looks at all of you very intently. Weird. We found those before. Were they hostile? Yes. Oh. Many of them. Oh, he wasn't. Or so we know. Oh, he, he didn't try anything that we were aware of. Did it speak to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of walks around now nervously. We thought they were all gone. So you're telling me that this thing is still moving and speaking? Well, no, it crawled. Well, in maybe there it, was more of them. Wait, wait, wait! What? It crawled into a, a boiling pit of metal yeah. ink. The kind. Of, Transcendent Falls. We're not uh, entirely sure that the puddles of ink aren't a portal. Oh yeah, we also had yeah. to use these goggles to see it. It yeah. was in a plane in another plane of existence. If you show him those goggles and say that, he's like, oh, God. where did you get those? Fun fact, we found like two where terrible did gypsy you lapidaries. Get those? They had them commissioned. Uh, Gypsy she, wait, hold on. she fucking mentioned this guy. She mentioned Percy. Fucking, I didn't, I don't have my notes out. What the fuck are their names? I, I, I totally forgot. Uh, uh, oh, I don't my notes out. They, it's two sisters. They're yeah, two twin sisters. Yeah. They have the same name, except they're not the same yeah, name. It's like one syllable They off. Rond, well, they were talking Rhonda. Rhonda. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was Rhonda. like, well, I'm having one trying to figure out what the fuck the like, thing does. You're trying, you're not quite sure. Um, you probably have to use identify. So after we say Rhonda, Rhonda, Rhonda he's... He kind of looks at you. You met them. You love going through old notes. I just have something that says, separate fuck from gem. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and I, had, and I had to look at context to figure out what the fuck that yeah. means. You're fucked. Yeah. You're the right fuck from the gym. Yeah. 
I was like, what fuck happened so, to him? So <laughs> as you say, Rhonda and <laughs> Tonda, and you, you mentioned, you know, the tribal sisters. He looks at you. They, uh... They should not have been seen. They shouldn't be doing work outside of the forest. They must need the money. Times. This is not good. They were a little shifty. Not to tell that we got them. They should not be cutting gems. That is supposed to be a secret of ours. I believe they said that we didn't see that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, the only reason we are mentioning that. There's only two known lapidaries in all of the cloud tops. One that is held by the Rocks family. The other, Pug Jameson. Many do not know of his brother. No one knows of the two sisters. Their broken allegiance helped raise them and help them when they were younger. They were found in the forest of no return. Still alive. Sisters, little girls. How they did so? We don't know where their parents went. But I've heard strange things of the forests up there with the bears and things, and they firmly believe in them. Forest of no return. Your word. Nor would. Knows. There's there's some kind of ruins within the forest of no return. I don't remember why the ruins are pertinent to us. But and then that area is also known to possibly link to other yeah. existence. Yep. Okay. The people are wacky and weird. Yeah, there's tribes and stuff yeah. and yeah. <coughs> so the fact that they're outside of the forest. It's strange. This far out of your wood? There's a lot of uh, unrest. It's, uh, Dragon Ball. Oh, one of them's apparently fucked. This is his dad, by the way. It's a good chance. He just kind of looks at you. We can trust you, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I bet they have some information they're keeping secret as well. Sure sounds like it. Something's going on there. So, there's a fragment of Relinoff still out there. That means only the worst, I can imagine. What are, they, what are these fragments? Kind of leans back. I was told by... Go get your tattoo. Dennisteen... That, um, these fragments were supposedly split from him from a long time ago during the Calamity. He made a decision that tore him apart, fracturing him. The only way he was able to supposedly deal with it was to separate parts of his memory out. By going in and taking out the worst parts, he thought he could cleanse himself of what he did. Yeah, Elnov is, I know for a fact, has the ability to transfer, if not memories, bits of, bits of souls into things. Yeah. And if you're telling me this memory's still alive, that... Leads me to believe that maybe not only alive, it's also coherent. Hold a conversation. Enough to talk. Yeah, yeah, maybe that, that, his that essence seemed more could like, still be that somewhere. Seemed more like it didn't know how to talk because nobody talks to it. More so than it does know how to talk. Semantic. Yeah, that's that's also. I mean, I. I've kind of, it seems that after after preventing 
dissuading a calamity. Well, no, I've kind of went nut. Uh, oh, wait, you're talking about soul memory magic? Fuck with that shit on yourself isn't a good idea? Uh, no, Let me I just put that note down yeah. and put it on this board that says obvious things are obvious. Uh, and so it... Fucking bat. He's, he is actually the red count. He kind of turns. Um, I think we need to go and speak with someone. Is that someone going to get us to his nephew? Like, in the... No, but it might help us decide what we do next. Well, we need to get his face tattooed with a gator. <laughs> I'm not getting a face tattoo of a gator. I don't know why you think that's a good idea. It's not random. cool at all. No. It is gator. No. Right there. No? No, I'm good. Oh, he kind of looks. Like my teeth aren't sharp. Takata's, Takata's in be. town still. I would It'd does. be a hippo no, tattoo then. We, we can, tea. um, we can get that taken care of. Uh, I already have an idea. No. There's a individual. His name is Old Rober. He's in town near the religious assemblies, and um, he's been said to be crazy. His family's of old religion. They don't really... Follow one true deity, they more so just make sure it kind of uh, exists. The stories he has, maybe they aren't all just crazy nonsense after you have told me some of this. Dennis Dean told me a story about 20 to 30 years ago. A group, they won the Mythic Dungeon Trials. It was a group of about six of them. They were tasked by, I guess, the group at the time of the Unbroken Allegiance to crack down these fragments of these memories. We knew they existed and we thought that they kind of held something that was pertinent. They went and found one. And it killed them all. We've not sent any back since. Since I've joined. So. Knowing that there's another one. And maybe more. And you're telling me possibly. A bridgeway or a pool that it travels through. But it's also not hot. Oil. You have a bottle of it. Did you put a flame to it? Uh, no, the match. Not the pool. No, not that one. There were other pools of black liquid within the same room. Flame touched that one. I will tell you something that happened the last time I was in a media about two years ago. When I went there, I was sitting at a dinner. With the Red Council talking of how the taxes were going to affect all the people and blah, blah, blah. And I decided that I was going to light up one of my pipes. When I did so, a large door and all the windows blew open as a bunch of individuals let out the air. And not one candle... Or oh, one lantern blew out in the entire establishment. I thought that was odd. When I also had that ink, the ink, can I see it? I just want to see a tiny little bit. Come on! 
He just grabs it and takes these very smallest little bit and puts it on a part. No, no, he just he p- puts his bang in and just like, and then just rubs on his teeth like, yeah, it's the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, the ink. He, he takes, he takes, he, takes part, he takes part of this like flint stick that he has and you see him kind of etch the part of it and it lights this flame and he takes a little bit of tinder and he takes it to the edge of this little bit of oil that he has on the end of his finger. And you see that it lights. And he has it holds there. He just holds it on his finger. And then he holds the light to the side and he waves his hand over the light. It's hot. But this is on my finger. I don't feel it. And then you see the flame starts to grow. Okay, I'm starting to feel it now. And then it starts to grow really quickly. And almost like immediately, but the oil doesn't seem to be burning. It doesn't seem to be absorbing any of it. The flame just seems to be going off of it. He kind of, <laughs> flame doesn't go out. He uh, kind of throws a little oil and it kind of wicks off in the flame. Just <laughs> And the flame moves with it and lands on the ground. And it just burns. We. Yep. Okay. He just looks. He goes over and he just kind of. Let's take this, this coffee cup that's on his table. I just put, I just put it on. Just on top of it. You, you cover it. Yeah, like... He looks at you. Okay, good. He looks at his finger and he's got like a little like welt that's starting to form. I'm going to walk over and I'm going to cover it. Still fire. Do you need thaumaturgy? I want to try I'm gonna, to I'm dim gonna, can I, fire. Can I pick up the oil with me? You can pick it up, and as you do so, there's like this tiny speck of this ink, and it's just, you hold the flame. I was almost going to do something impulsively. <laughs> what were you going to do? I was going to, well, we have fire, and we have a big ice block. Oh, guys, no, see what happens. I, I want to go. Ice block? Put this back down. You see Percy, his eye just kind of... What in the hell? Wait, I mean, hey... Don't like that! Yeah, I, I was gonna say... If yeah, we're, we're just gonna put a tattoo uh, with that ink in him. I wonder what we see <laughs> you, know, you know what that means? We gotta light down on fire. Yeah. Oh, no. let's, let's, let's see I can, what happens. I, can, I, can, I can it. He's like, I'm committed. I was, I was gonna, yeah, uh, yeah, I've worked, I've worked for this. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> uh, I mean, all I'm saying, personally, is you got a, uh, what seems to be an infinite <laughs> source of heat. I'd park it inside this ice block to maybe ward off. He so takes part of like a, a stick that he has I and he just kind of starts. Okay, so you, you move it over and you set it next to it. I'm gonna try to touch the ice one. You touch it. Doesn't go out or anything, and we just gonna, like, it's go slowly the just terrible idea of tries being, like, to melt it, but it's very cool. Uh, um, Doesn't it almost like an burning liquid next to like, mm-hmm. another extra-dimensional gym. Pretty much. Yeah, that's why I didn't do it. Could be a terrible idea. That's why I didn't do it, yeah. Okay. Well, this is a giant cube of yeah. ice, so you're going to get through all that first. And it's not even melting it, so it's fine. Yeah, that's until fucking... First memory man hand just fucking goes out of that little fucking dot and just no. y- eats that gem into the. As you guys are boy. sitting here, Percy looks. The <laughs> he he then looks back. So, what do we do? Well, I need to go see the tattooist. Do her? Me? Piccata. Yeah. Piccata. This on me, and then uh, we gotta talk to old Rover. Is that his name? Rover. Rover. Ro- Rover. Rover. B. Mm-hmm. Um, might have some information. Uh, so next, like I said, our our current current plan of action: stop by here, stop by Albersy, did some shopping. We ordered we did green about a week or two ago. Up our groceries. Like to have stopped home and just, huh? Yeah, you got lucky and your armor got done. I have clothes. I don't know if any. 
build or mine. No, I, I tried to, and they said it could have failed, so I didn't buy anything. I remember. Mm -hmm. Got your. Wanted to bring you got, my, you got your wand though, didn't you? Yeah. All right. So for we'll say for sake of time, yeah. you'll go and you go grab your clothing. You guys will then. I want to buy clothing for this weather. For this weather, I would love yeah. to do that as well. Okay. Things and the tent. Okay, so you can guys. Can I specifically get magical clothing that looks like normal clothing that works? In this you guys weather? all go together, and you notice that a lot of the furs and whatnot are completely sold out. Mm -hmm. You notice that as you guys are looking, those that are available are extremely priced. And I mean gouged beyond all belief. And you see certain individuals just walking by, not even looking. You see a lot of people are okay in Alberzine as magical effects are allowing the warmth to kind of keep the place at about a 35 degrees. Um, there's still some snow that is making its way through due to the just severity of the storms that are happening. Um, and you see now that you are walking around, that there's rumors of some of the sorcerers and the supposed blue gem that is keeping some of these city walls and things powered here in Hexwell, that it's possibly faulting, that it could be not keeping up in some of the cities. And that's why Hexwell is Did having say this. Did blue gem? Mm-hmm. don't know if we do that. Yeah, you, you hear that there are different um, discussions about how this gem is supposedly helping keeping a lot of things powered here in Hexwell. Many of the inventions, and they're thinking that the power is being waned on due to the storm. You guys then travel through. You guys are not able to really pick up clothing unless you guys are willing to pay a couple hundred gold. What about a tent? Tent you can get, yeah. Uh, the tent will run you about five gold right now. A tent that would work in this weather. Ooh, uh, I'd say, do you have any fur on you? Me, no. I, I gave uh, I gave Percy... Oh. Oh, no. We got common clothes. Those are common clothes. I don't like two dick and pants. Let me look at my other gear. I thought I left them. Yeah, I'd say without. I mean, you're in a capital. They, Can I find and a random mage that shut knows down. To identify and pay him to identify this tankard? You can do so. Cost you 25 gold. I pay him 25 gold. Tankard is a tankard of sobriety. Whatever you drink of this will oh, sober sick. you up. So I can get like mega smash. And then this is my on smash tankard. Yep. Yep. Yes. You have to remember that. And it is. And it, yeah. Now that you have cleaned it up, it is very like metallic with like white slots on the inside that kind of embroider around, and it's pretty elegant made. Um, the rest of you, you look around. There's pretty much no real winter attire that is readily available here in the capital everything is pretty much within the last two weeks been completely bought out and you don't see any signs really of things being restocked anytime soon okay second question i'm gonna jug okay that's yeah, it though that's see. all that's all i want a tentacle rock if you use one I want infinite beer and mayonnaise. I'll say that'll run, that'll just run you. Uh, we'll oh, say uh, gold. Really, a magic item? It makes infinite alcohol. Oh, the alchemical jug. Yeah, alchemical jug. Mm. Hope the homestead. I was, I was hoping that we could stop by there or leaving the. They're probably all dead. My hometown for again. I'm just being a realist here, like, oh. but like, you see this city Ondor. that we're in, Ondor. barely holding on. I mean, oh, if you oh. want an unlimited flask, you can, do, you can go to Ondor. That's where I got kill mine. Kill skeletons. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's going to stop the snow <laughs> and the elementals. And you, could get a, you could get one from Ondor. That's, That's where, where he got his. Last last. How long have we been going? Yeah, but I want an alchemical jug. From, I want to make beer. from where? From home. Like a week from, from Adventus, the single alcohol of that is always it's in bad there. hand. Let me double check. Yeah, but I also want to be able to make acid to get from there. And then, but it new? took us not like went to New Wall, to New Wall, and, and then, then you went back. But what and then you guys the went thing. right, but then you guys went three days to Drusven, and then you guys have been almost a half day to go to the whole 
into the cave and back. So you're looking at about uh, almost six days. Okay. Well, they had. Can food. I get? They can I get now? Custom food. Oh, well, well, yeah. Yeah. Just, so um, here, off. it's going to be expensive. We don't you look around. Uh, you see a shopkeep. How? You go up to like him. an uncommon. Yeah, right now, supply or demand is real high. What yeah. Are we talking about? Uncommon. Yeah. It's going to be oh, about three hundred and fifty gold. How much is that in platinum? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. I'll, I'll pay it. I don't give a fuck. I want so I don't have. Do you have how much money do you have? Are you keeping track I have of your 105 money? After buying, wait, after identifying, 105 platinum. Okay. So it's 25 more platinum. No, it's 35 more. 35 more platinum. And he's just so spent two platinum. more because you spent 25. You spent 25 gold, so that's two and a half platinum. Hey, you make two gallons of mayonnaise. I made two gallons of mayonnaise. So, so you almost lost 40 platinum. So you have like around 60 left. Yeah, 60 so platinum. you need to be making sure you're. What did, uh, Keep a track of that. Percy said he hadn't heard from... Denison. Denison in how long? About a week. Well, he hadn't spoke to him about things for almost two weeks, but he hadn't heard from him in about a week. Because last time you guys had all spoke oh, yeah. was when Denison almost died, you know, when he was in shackles and you guys got him out of Hexwell, basically. That was the last time... And that was when he told you, yeah, and that was when he told you, hey, I'm a part of the Unbroken Allegiance, like, this is what's going on. I cast Sitting to Dancing, and I say, hey, you okay? Percy hasn't heard from you in a while. You, I say. you wait a few moments, and then, ah, uh, yes, um, we've been better, but, um, many of the Storm Guardsmen here are keeping Inventus still safe. Gerard is doing... Work so until he leaves Inventus, we're fine for now. But we are almost out of food, and Oxford has chopped down all the trees, and we're almost out of wood. We're about a day or two away from leaving the house. You and have 25 words, you know. <laughs> that was a lot well, there we go. <laughs> that was a lot more. Than They're close to leaving the house. They had, they had like three weeks of food. Wait. He's missed you. <laughs> <laughs> they still got like two weeks. Of food. It stops. He just keeps talking. And really it doesn't sound like it though. You maybe left that much. Well, you also yeah, don't know what's really food. happening. Other people might have needed food. Yeah. Not everybody is maybe ready for the end of the world. <clears throat> like, how do you have three weeks or four weeks of groceries at your house? Right now? Yeah. Same. <laughs> I don't. I Wait, can make it. I'd be fine. I got, I got, I got, I got three, four weeks of meat. We. Yeah. Had, I got freezer full, but potato. you know. We got cans. True. We True. had one. Had, had one. All right. So, what are you guys doing? Uh, I still gotta get a tattoo. We still gotta talk to Old Rover. <laughs> All right, so I now you guys, have four gallons of beer. Yep, so you have just an extra luggage of alcohol with you. You guys do what little shopping that you tried to do, but were kind of shut down in what you wanted to get at the capital. You guys make your way back around. You end up at Takata's. You walk on in, and you see that she's still this half-orcish, kind of overweight, bearing woman. Oh, you back, are you? And I'm successful. Oh, and you pull it out, and she's like, "No, no, this." Holy is shit! Been, you are been the son of the previous tattoo artist. <laughs> <laughs> you you look at it. Is it is it real though? Yes. Yeah. Had a, had a like gelatinous cubes. Had a stern talking to by an evil spirit. All right. Came straight out of a out of a. Boiling pit. She kind of starts looking at you, and um, I think it's uh, it's gonna be magically infused. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna need you to uh, tell me what you want, and uh, not quite too big, cause uh, she looks at the vial. We can stretch it decently far, but what are you looking to get? Luckily, the only thing I'm really looking for is just straight lines. Um, a lot of them. Uh, have you ever seen how electricity runs through wood? Yeah. Uh, essentially, uh, wreaths 
of lightning, electricity, uh, preferably I would like to do four each arm, but if we have to settle for three. Okay, so some sort of almost like stripes in a way. Well, yeah, there there would be the 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 lightning going, and then the lightning come on yeah. a little bit. But yeah, I envision it. I got it. All right. Um, do you have some money? Or is uh, OC still spotting this one? Or um, and from my understanding, the deal is I brought you the ink. This settles a debt between you and Percy. Oh, we're paying that one off, are we? I, 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 that's between you two. I don't know what what we're talking about. I'll talk to him. If okay. not... He already got his pelt, so he's happy. We'll make a deal. Now, yeah. she motions over to the chair. Yeah. You sit there for about an hour. You notice that she pulls out this like chisel tool that comes to like almost a point, almost looks like a sewing needle. And she starts kind of running it over your body with this small hammer and every once in a while kind of slamming it very gently into your body as you feel the kind of protrusion just very softly hit you. You see the ink kind of etched into you as a, like a blue spark kind of cements it into your um, exterior form. After this hour goes through, and you finally acquire your Eldrix tattoo. So, do you do you know what it is? You want me to tell you? Uh, I do you have I, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's an actual. Yep. Yeah. So you now have that, and you see it now kind of pulse once it's almost completed around your arms and just, boom, and you feel through your body the strength of arm slightly changing a little. Now you walk out. The rest of you kind of hanging drinking. out, drinking During that hour, quite I heavily. I, I'm like drinking. I have like I a cup. Try to, I have the like tank of sobriety full already. Yeah. But I'm just drinking right out of the jug. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And every time I get like way too tipsy, I'm just you like, You tune to it. Yeah, um, I'm drunk again. After doing so, <laughs> and you, while he's getting it, um, yeah. you take right, some time, on. you tune to it, and after doing so, you realize that this item... Yeah. It, uh, you look at a couple things and you eventually take after about an hour hour and a half you realize that this is something that is um will help you with investigating you go through and you realize that this will give you advantage on investigation checks so anything that'll be intelligence based um you will have in that area of study so basically if you take something and you look at it You'll have advantage on it. Hey, life. For her crazies for the so, this is investigation item. Class, so it's only things you're like. Looking it's like at. a eye monocle kind of. Oh, okay. So you like you know slide it over and it can. I mean, it would actually go. I, I with, think it would. Yeah. I think it would attach. Yeah, to you my would, Yeah, you. I was about to say piece. you'd be able to. Oh. Is this a homebrew item or no? No, it's eyes of minute scene. Oh yeah. But seriously, though, can I buy that off you? <laughs> I'm an investigator. It's my thing, man. Yeah. He wants to look. Wants to be Sherlock Holmes. Um, He's like, but how good is it? Yeah. Actually, 59. I need one more platinum to buy a bunch of tinfoil. Uh, you buy a platinum of tinfoil? Yes. I'm Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have multiple sets. Give me the 59 platinum. Give okay. me the eyes a minute scene. So you swap. Are there like an actual item in the store? Yeah. 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 You can just add them. This one. Doesn't require a nope. tuning either. Nope. It's good stuff. Now, so you we guys. go back to Percy. 59 to find out where Rober is. You know he's in the religious section, which is basically the. You guys would know just from being in Alberzin a few times that it's in the center ish of the city. Um, it's about 20 minutes from where you guys are, and if you maybe wanted to go and investigate it yourself, okay, um, I don't know if Percy knows exactly where he's at. Um, they're known to kind of... Sure tinfoil is one platinum worth it, real quick. <laughs> um, yeah, I, don't... I don't even know if they would have that much available <laughs> right now. I'd say you could get, like, for, we'll say... Yeah, we'll say, we'll say for five gold, you get like a decent, pretty heavy chunk of like tinfoil that's been thickly kind of wrapped around a rod a couple times. So we'll say you got like 10 sheets. I don't have any money. 
I'll go I ahead. have nine sheets oh. in one hand. What, what are you looking to buy? Not really. No. Give me a crafting check over there, Magnus. I want to see how good that tinfoil hat is. An intelligence. <laughs> I add my proficiency. Is there anywhere we can no. get? Is there anywhere proficient in tinfoil hat making? Two more hats and I'll allow you to be. <laughs> is there anywhere that I could get like, those shoes that fit me properly? 17. My toes are starting to hurt. Sure. <laughs> it looks pretty great. Okay. I'm going to use my, my, I have like that telekinetic mage hand. It's one purpose. It's they have, it on my head. they're very basic ones that you see people are making out of just uh, sticks. Um, they might work. They seem to be going for about three gold. You don't need to breathe, oh, right? How heavy are they? No, I don't want Not very heavy at all. You, you could survive you kinda in a bag look of Look at them and they're kind of flimsy. No, bullshit, because when I didn't need to breathe, I wasn't allowed to. So, no. Well, no it's really, it's really upset. Tough shit. No. Breathing we'll creatures no. inside the bag can survive to a, a more minus equal to the bag with a number of creatures. But if you're not a breathing creature, yeah, you're I, I know. That's anti fun. Stop. How much would like a sheet, no, of, it, uh, it's, sheet of metal? Hey, it's anyway, 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 how much would what? A sheet of metal. He just bought for five gold ten sheets of tin foil. That's gonna be way more. Super durable. What just you, like what are you trying to do? I'm gonna buy some cheap snow boots and reinforce them with metal. You could probably go get like some basic, you know, like scrap iron. Or you could just go buy some fucking snow boots. He tried. They don't, they don't have any. They have cheap. these cheap ones. Maybe if you'd pay attention. You should buy expensive ones. They don't have them. They've all been bought. Bean. You should have. We're in the middle of beans. literally the, the, the snow wait a minute, for wait a minute, like wait a two. No, some I have weeks the, here. I have two pairs of dwarf anti snow boots. I am wearing dwarf anti snow boots. Yes. So why so don't, you get, my why don't you get them refitted <laughs> at a shoemaker? Is that possible? Yeah. Oh. You're wearing one pair and he has these. You go to all your tanner yeah, leather and pair. see oh, if you? woodworker Good. even maybe. Okay. I thought we still go. Yeah. I thought we still yeah. all okay, so dead body stuff. You so go. Still, you, you look at one. You, you, you waddle over. You sit you. I don't know who. Oh else yeah, is you're in. about a size <laughs> draconic. He looks down. Uh, uh, yeah, I yeah can, I've been um, wearing these for like a week or so. He goes over. And he just grabs this like <laughs> small. This small little slab of uh, what looks like this pliable well, wood almost. Like, it's it's almost like a makeshift, um, kind of like a leather, but it's not leather. It's almost like a fake version of it. He kind of attaches it to the end of the shoe and then kind of rolls it over one of the ends. Um, if I do that a couple more times, I can probably make it wide enough and long enough for your toes. Uh, Ten gold to refit the whole thing. Oh, yeah. He needs, yeah, he needs a pair of one. He <laughs> yes, needs a pair yes. of refit, right, too. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I've watched you try uh, 15 to for both of them. If you guys are getting a partner deal, 15 gold. Uh, I'll do them both right now. Side him up. I'll, I'll get the 15 gold. I'll just get yeah, he, right. he took 59. Sit five. down, and uh, you see he goes in the back, and this young boy just comes out, and he starts bringing what looks like almost like yarn and these bits of uh, almost like thinly peeled like leaves and wood, like bark almost, and he starts just kind of stringing them around. Uh, try not to get these uh, in the fire. They will burn extremely quick. Keep them on the snow, and if they get wet, just dry them out. Um, he patches them up. You guys gather your newly fitted and durable now. No boots. Okay. I'm gonna take six gold if that's cool. So that gold. I'm gonna buy two of those cheap cheapies, just in case. Yep. So you got two more. You they're very thin. You can just easily keep them in your pack by yourself. You don't even need to worry about those. They weigh maybe like two three pounds total. You guys so gather your the, supplies. The Winterlands, or are they just straight up no boots? There is a boot that does the. Oh no! These are just a, it'll impede your dis or it'll allow you to not have disadvantage. That's it. It would no. It's not okay. difficult. Or difficult. Sorry. Yeah, you won't have difficult terrain when um walking. Yeah. Let me sure because there is a boot that does that, but there's more than just that. Nope, that's not why these. I, that's why it's, I it's that boot. Sure. Except it's all it only does that. It's the baby version of that boot. Okay. The cheap mass produced military version <laughs> for the guards and knew all that one. Now, as you guys are walking around, are you guys heading back to Percy's or are you guys just going to go to the religion 
uh, the religious sect and see if you can find rubber, if that's what you are doing. Why are we finding rubber again? Yeah, Percy believes. I got nothing else. Uh, I, don't... I mean, you guys have plenty of things you can do. I'm just. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, Percy can teleport you to certain areas. Only, so hold on. Motivations currently uh, were saving. Thought he would be in the store. That's still a thing. Yep. The other option is um, heading to media to deal with this. Yep. Uh, and for either of those well, that we should probably talk about. Issue is, how do we want to solve this? Because, like, if we sit, go and save his nephew and go meeting, that's like kind of like the cloak and dagger way to handle the Red Council. We like kind of expose him, blah blah blah. Or like we can go to the meeting and just kind of like face him head on. I mean, I've also uh, thought about that in the fact that I don't know if I like the idea of media and just immediately be in a room from individuals red council where one see. of them is proven to turn into a dragon uh, uh yeah, we told you that. Yeah. yeah uh yeah i mean we also <laughs> there's also another <coughs> one that kind of wants me dead and i would like i mean i would have to kill him, but he has a thing that I, well, i'm probably gonna i'm kill pretty him. sure they hate me too and at this point fuck this Maybe, give me a wisdom saving throw Can we can we tell anything's wrong with him? Above the table? Nothing wrong with him. Sixteen. Like he's okay. rolling saves. That was the third one. And I'm I assuming like he can't just be like normal. And, like, at this that. point, I failed the first two. That's the first one. If I this is what I at think this it is, point, we, we can't do it. You, not, we, we don't even know what's happening. You kind of feel like, this almost right. like um, I think the ability can do it, but uh -huh. we don't have that. Almost like this feeling like something is like watching you shake it for a moment you almost feel like some of your scales on like the back of your neck kind of prick up and while everybody's talking you kind of just look around and you just kind of shrug it off and you feel this feeling just kind of subside that's it oh yeah from <laughs> it's just like a <laughs> These three know, know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Above table. We literally no, he no, didn't. JJ, no. I love it. Yeah, same, same, it. same, same. I don't know what it is either. Oh, we okay. We literally can't do anything about it anyway, yeah. so. Yeah. No, like, yeah. We, like, there's, there's those that can, but yeah. we don't have that. We're not no, high enough no, level. This is a very. And very we have to know that that's happening to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, rover and then choose A or B. Um, I mean, there's some C's in there. There's probably a D. There's other paths, um, but I don't think. Um, the other thing is that going to a meeting, uh, we're probably not going to just immediately get into a fight with Brent. They They have to keep as much as we do. Or this is a trap, and they're gonna kill all their their problems opposition in one go. In one go, using this as a well. If that's the case, I would love to be in a room full of their opposition. Now, while you guys are walking, you guys kind of make it through heading. Where are you heading? We're heading. Uh, let's go talk to Rover. Or, uh, Rover. Yeah, we're heading towards their religious. Center. Okay, so you guys start heading towards the center of Alberzine. As you do so, about five minutes in, you realize outside in the center, immediately Thomas Eldon, one of your old teachers, um, this small gnomish figure, um, very cleanly dressed in like a white uh, collared shirt with like a black vest over it. He's got black hair, and he's standing on what looks to be this table, just holding tons of pieces of parchment. 
We need to sign this petition. The Red Council is not doing what they say. This election is very important. Look at what's happening around you. Don't be blind, people. He kind of looks around. He's handing out is these there, papers. Is, there, is it like a loud murmuring? Uh, not like I'm, well, there's people around, but not that many. It's um very cold, and not is very many people are so out. You guys look around. There's maybe ten people pass around the street. It's not like a large center of town. Um, you see, you guys start walking up, and he kind of makes his way off the table, and then he immediately. Fuck this, Professor. What um? What <clears throat> brings you back to town after the? Uh... Anyway, I thought you were just here to gather some of the new encampments, and you're still here. Came and went. Business, business. You know, how have you been? Trying to do right by the people. Take this, and as you grab the paper, you feel like this warmth kind of infuse with it. As you know, he's like a magical script writer, and you see the l like literal writing on it start, you know, flowing. And as you read that, it's just him shouting out, you know, helping this what looks to be group that is against the Red Council. He looks to be helping what looks as you read all the way at the bottom is paper signed by Beatrix Hemtrix. You look at it. Uh, she's going to be running. Um, she is not doing the greatest right now, but we're hoping that changes before the end of the year when the elections start. Is there like a news? There is. This is the like actual that's known to be like. Yeah, it's like the the actual chronicles of Hexwell. Yeah. Anti-establishment newspaper. No, there's not that, and the Red Council does not allow that. <laughs> and there's no like. That's right, known. Like, there's That's, no freedom of press. In there the is Hexwell. no freedom of press in Hexwell. That's somewhere in like Geom or maybe somewhere else, but here it is pretty much it's anarchy. Different. Yeah, it, it's like. The yeah, they, they call it an anarchy, but it's pretty much ruled by a king that's a boy, but it's actually ruled by the Red Council. You guys have learned this by now. Well, she has, <laughs> she has our vote. You kind of. Uh, you, you flip the back page over and you see a picture of her and you see this gown that you immediately notice. And you remember a couple weeks ago you were in Alberzine when you saw an individual lose a couple platinum that was stolen. Ten platinum. Yeah, and as you look, been lost. And, as, and as you look, oh, you're, you're like, oh my god. I've You've seen her. And you know that She's probably here in Alberzine, possibly, as that was the last time you saw her about a week and a half ago. And as you look, you see Thomas. He, what are you up to right now? We're, we're looking what for are, a man in town. What are you old, looking for? Old Robert. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a friend of mine. He's a good guy. You, uh, you guys going to speak to him? Okay, I can take you to where he's at if you want. Sure, it'll be great. Mm. He kind of has been anti red council. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's so he's, he's, and he's first, public about it. I'm gonna ask you about the petition. Well, like as we're walking over. Yeah, so you, so you guys, he gets down, walks over. You guys start walking about another five minutes. So you guys keep talking. Don't have to share our deepest darkest secrets with everyone. <laughs> so yes, we do. The, the petition Someone needs to know. The public needs to know. You're a terrible. That spot. the Red Council is killing everybody. <laughs> you, you see, and he starts talking to you. the uh, the petitions to just enforce that um, Beatrix will be running at the end of the year in about seven weeks, and when the election starts after the mythic dungeon trials have uh, begun, we will be. In open debates, we will be taking on the, I'm pretty sure it will be Albrecht Ardo, the representative of Hexwell and the Red Council, and um, he will most likely be who we will be facing off against. I haven't heard of many other representatives that they are bringing forth yet, though I'm sure there'll be a few last standees. Um, 
You guys walk a little bit. He shows you another paper. This is what I think we can really do. And it's like a list. And you see as he hands it to you, it's not a list. You look at it. And as he's talking, it seems as if he's talking of, you know, politics and politicians. But on the paper he just handed you, you see his hand move with like a quill. And as he does so, the words start changing. He says, and as you read, don't say anything out loud, but Rober works for the Red Council. Be careful what you say to him. That's why I've made friends with him. I've learned much insight from what they believe to be a crazy old man. But I think he has true secrets locked away. Kind of looks at you and gives you a nod. He looks at the rest of your friends. Seems unsure if he can trust them. He looks at you. You've always been a good student. Fuck this. He looks at you. Rover's up here. You see a small, almost like a little chapel building and an individual <clears throat> and an individual standing out front. He seems to be standing and he seems to be standing on a small little box. He seems to shout and you see like almost drunkard ale like bottles and jugs just kind of spilled around him. And it looks like people have thrown drinks and things at him. You hear him yelling. Let it be known that this will be handled by... Hexwell and the Red Council. These storms are a sign that the Red Council can take down anything. The meeting in a few days will show this. The Red Council has our utmost respect. You see a woman go by. Yeah, whatever. These storms are getting worse and people are dying. What are they doing? You hear him kind of look at her and just kind of smirk his face. You guys make your way up. And you see now, Thomas, Hey, Roper, I have a couple of individuals, um, an old student of mine, actually. He wants to pick your brain about a few things. Do you mind in um, investing a little bit of your time? You see he kind of looks, and as you look, he has got one blind, kind of just smeared out eye. And the other one is almost like crazy and jolting off in different directions. He's got maybe three teeth. And he's pretty clean for the most part, but he just looks crazy. Um, he's got like a small little uh, hat that doesn't go all the way down over his ears. And he's got not enough clothing on to really go outside of the town. And he, how he's not freezing right now is beyond you. He kind of gets down and makes it about five feet towards you. Huh? You want me to speak to a student of yours? Thomas is like, ah, uh -huh, good, good joke there, Roba, but for real. They have some business and they want a moment of your time. He kind of looks at you. Are you for the Red Council? And then Thomas, let's not make this political, Roba. They're just here to ask some questions. Try not to get on all of your crazy conspiracy theories or anything this time. They just want honest information. If you can give that. He kind of turns around and Thomas hands you and flips the back. And as he does so, he hands you his quill. And as he kind of sits it down, more writing starts to emit on the piece of paper. And as you read, it says, only tell him very little. He will remember everything. Thomas starts to walk away a little bit goes about 10 feet off and that's where we're going to take a quick break and then we'll pick back up here in a couple minutes with your guys' conversation with Rover. Roba. Roba.
All right, so picking up you guys with Rover. Thomas had just walked away. Rover kind of makes his way back towards his little corner next to this chapel where he's sitting, and uh, he kind of slumps back against this box that he was originally standing on. So, um, what you want to talk about? We were talking to Percy. You know Percy. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, he mentioned that you might have some information on these uh, lost memories of Brother Oh, wow. You're just coming right out. Yeah. He looks around. Curious. We're a curious bunch. I know all kinds of things. And he kind of like stands up and kind of pokes his chest out a little bit. I know all kinds of things. Fragments, Red Council, what do you want to know? I know that all of the members of the Red Council are currently in the media. I know that Jenna Strigley has recently gone missing. Haven't seen her in a minute. Been keeping up with her, but haven't seen her. I know that these fragments supposedly were hired to be tracked down at some point by some group of outriders or bandits by maybe the crown or some outside force, but we are unsure. Maybe even the Rocks family, but we don't know. Well, it's just... Are they? We maybe heard that they uh, weren't all dead. I don't know. What stories have you heard? That's just my theory. Never Percy. He seems to think that those who were sent to... Or do away with these fragments are all dead. Hmm, that's a different take on things. Okay, I could see it, maybe. So then, what are these fragments doing? I heard that these fragments, now this is just hearsay, or, you know, around the streets, but if these fragments are alive, what's keeping them alive? What are they doing? Why are they still memories? Wouldn't they fade when whoever owns the memories fades? Why are they still around? I've wondered this for a long time now. If that's the case, then, then whose ever memories they are, Listen, maybe not faded. You see, he's a human, maybe in mid-50s. I've been around, and I've spoke to a lot of people, came up with a lot of theories, a lot of stories, the Red Council does what they can. And you think that they would just let these fragments just exist? I don't think so. They hired some group, and they went and dealt with them. Unless you know something else. You you work for the Red Council? I wish. Hopefully one day. And it kind of looks up. That is what I aspire to be. Insight. I think I'm like 17. He seems to be like hardcore Red Council. Like he is a fanboy. Is, is it bad? I'm, I'm like He's imagining a shade. Maybe, from like maybe so fanboy blinded to some things, you know? Like how you over. You Can know. get that reference? Nope. But. It, he seems to, you know, almost be like a conspiracy theorist as well. You know, his thoughts maybe aren't 100% true of what he's saying, but it is what he believes. We came across a lost memory. Get the hell out. Yeah, like, imagine, like, how how can I believe you? Sleep paralysis. And you're alive. It was non-lethal. Now where are all of your goggles? On mine cannot be. His they, or his eyes. Yeah. yeah. Do they, yeah. Do they have like memory recording? Or... What? The goggles. No, not that you know of at least. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he he looks at you and he's like, now that you guys just have your goggles. Where'd you get those? Some random merchant? Odd thing. Yeah. It's an odd thing to have. Well, they are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, goggles we, with uh, 
cut gems in them. We didn't ask questions. We thought they were really cool, so we were like... Huh. So... You hit it on a dime there. These goggles, we can see in the other planes. That's how we saw them. But he didn't attack us. And you know it was a fragment. He, that's what he... Well... He said he was a lost memory. Yeah, the Red Council doesn't know about that. Or do they? I don't know, but... I think everyone should know about that. Or do they? I don't think so. Now... What do you guys want with the Red Council? You guys seem awful interested. Are you guys going to be politicians? Your representatives? Concerned citizens. Concerned about what? Can you world. see this? No. Yeah, what? Yeah, he, he if seems all these to know about missing kids. I mean, a bunch of shit's going to shit. Concerned citizen. Do you have any answers? Looking for. Any leads? You think the Red Council? Your tone seems off. I think. Someone knows something. Who? You got any proof? I'm looking for. Any names? Leads? Well, I got all these crows. I like catches a bunch of shit. Pretty fucking German. No, listen, I'm an honest man. And if you're telling me that. Do I believe him? He's an honest man. <clears throat> I'd say just by his intent. He seems so naive that if he could possibly be swayed that the Red Council could have possibly done something evil, that he would believe it if he had proof. Might discern or change the way he thinks about them, but currently he's only seen them in a certain light, so it seems as if whatever you're saying is, you know, that so, embrace. So he's, he's actually, like, interested in what I'm saying. He is not combative. Right. He that's what I'm getting at. He is very interested. That's a but, way different tone than what I was thinking was going but, on. But he's but he's yeah, trying I thought he just No, and no, but he's I, trying I, to figure out, you know, why are you just throwing things around he wants some evidence. Because he has evidence that, you know, the Red Council's doing good things. They're trying. Okay, we're gonna go into it then. Time for Magnus oh, no. exposition. <laughs> What's that tinfoil hat you got there? <laughs> I don't like people reading my thoughts. Okay? <laughs> you look like you want some. I got some extra sheets. Maybe. Tell everyone we meet our deepest, darkest secrets. I'm not even going into anything with that stuff. Okay. This, is, this, this is, is Magnus stuff. things. Okay. okay. All right. Magnus yeah. things. Do it. So, like, I was working as a guard in some dinky little dwarf town. A little like bit a big old south for my flat. West of Newall. Okay. You know, a bunch of these fucking kids just got fucking kidnapped. Napped. And I kept, and I was like the newly promoted investigator. Everything was hot shit for Magnus, you know? Yeah. It was great. Yeah. But every time I got close to like figuring out who this fucking crippled son of a bitch was that was kidnapping all these kids, all the evidence was ju would just disappear from the lockers. Everything. Boom. That's weird. Yeah. That, that means someone on my side. No. Was being like, yeah. What the fuck, Magnus? Fuck that guy. And all these why would missing they fucking kids. But why do you think they. I don't know, it wasn't you. What would they do with yeah, these? Yeah, it was me. I was kidding. <laughs> me. It was, it was me, Magnus. No, shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you think they would. Why would they be hiding it, though? So I don't know. They have kids. I don't know. The only lead I got is that they're shipping them to fucking some cult in fucking Audrey. Um, fuck nowhere in Audrey, which. Immediately sends a million red flags of why a cult would sacrifice kids. Why are they sending them to Audrey? Would get kids. To a Dardo Harriet. To that guy. Like, Eric. Think, think of it. Think of it. You're a cult. Eric. The easiest person to mold into an aspiring cultist would be an innocent child. I mean, you're not wrong. That's, uh, kind of looks around in the religious area. And, and the sad part is the second I stopped being a guard and left, it wasn't just my dinky little dwarf town. Huh. 
it's everywhere in Hexwell. And you think that this ties into the Red Council trying to hide something? If the guards are hiding the kidnapped kids and the crows are able to run fucking rampant, especially if, like, the one leading it is, like, called the crippled crow, I mean, like, I don't know how the fuck get away with killing a mad amount of kids. And then there's also the fact that the only way to smuggle this amount of people requires the cooperation of the Rocks family. Now we have like a trifecta of like things that have to fucking make sense for this for this to happen. For all, like the kids are missing. The Red Council would have to turn a blind eye to it. And the Rocks would have to assist the smuggling to a media. And then there someone in the media has taken the kids. So we got like you know, what Geom is the only fucking place that is in this fucking conspiracy that sounds right from what you're saying if it's true so you think that there's three of the regions working together trying to do what who who controls three regions who has that power do you think if you think listen i think it's a grab for power of all of them and you think i think it might happen during the election listen you might be on to something i'm not saying you're wrong i'm not saying that the red council is maybe in on it and they're the red hands here but what you're saying it lines up with some of the things now and here is another thing i found in my own investigations the red council has been known to be seen with a gem on a ring on their hands and from what I've heard of people that aren't Red Council, is that these gems have corruptive properties that fuck with people's mental states. And, like, I don't know about you, but, like, I've lived here my whole life. The Red Council's always been known to wear those gems. That is true. And they've been in power for so long that maybe over time, something has changed them. That and, like, I talked to the fucking leader of the Storm Chasers... And apparently the council's um, holding out on technological improvements for storm chasing. And as a storm orphan, that's important to me. You know something? I think you are onto something here. Call me crazy. I'm not saying that uh, Red Council's maybe not doing good, but they might be turning a blind eye. Or maybe somebody's doing something within there that they don't even know about. Yeah, I'm not even saying it's the whole Red Council. It could be just like one of them. So then what happened to Janice Trigley? You Janice got Janice Trigley? Above table? There's been a female. Above table? Above table. The was. We're going to. We're going to. I've heard whispers of her being a dragon. And that's it. His jaw just kind of drops a little bit. That's pretty far-fetched. I know, right? But, like, at this point, we have an apocalyptic storm. We have a criminal organization kidnapping kids. The, that, the kidnapping kids requiring three different nations to cooperate and you to think... cover up that whole operation. So what is this meeting happening in a meeting in a day or two? What's that? There's... Two options. There's two ways. Oh, they're calling either, all kinds of either, people there. Either it's a complete and honest grab for the solution to what's happening right now. Or it's a final, it's the best option to get all of the Red Council's enemies in one spot to deal with it one. They, they might think with the storm and how bad it is, the time for subtlety is over and might make a direct grab. You don't know. On term of martial law. You want to know what I heard, too, that they're not telling everybody that I heard, but not you're saying this? Give me a persuasion check at advantage after you said all that, because that was some so, good shit. Uh, yeah, I'll give you an inspiration, yeah, too, because yeah, that was good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you pulled stuff from back. Yeah. 19. Yeah, he looks at you. I think um, I even heard that... That storm out in Land End. It's not so much the storm that's the issue out there anymore. The storm is affecting it. But I heard that there's some metal figures. And he kind of looks at you. Kind of like your friend there. 
The word through the grapevine is, uh, seem to be defending part of that city. Seems as if, uh, something with them blue eyes or whatever. Four fours, hey, white walkers. other thing, um, so, that we might have inadvertently discovered is, um, Red Council. You ever heard of Cassandra Volt? I have, like, a huge note. Yeah, she, uh... I'm not gonna mention something. She was here. Above table. I heard Who's that... Ignore that. She, um... <laughs> this is the way I'm going. <laughs> she left town, though. Should have been seen a little yeah, bit of time. Yeah, a bunch of stuff happened to her. Blew up. But she made these machines that work with these little tiny fucking gems, okay? Okay. Like, they fucking do stuff. What kind of stuff? Well, it turned apparently turned one to a plant monster that killed my friend's companion... At some point, and at another point, might be able to make storms. So you, which like, means, the, Cassandra was founded by the Red Council, funded. And do you think she started that storm mountain land in? I don't know, but I know those machines have the potential to make storms or monsters. And in Landen, that storm originates in a Warforged graveyard, and we're dealing with, like, fucking extra-dimensional energies and a bunch of fucking soulless tin can bodies flying around. So that sounds like a good thing to happen. Kind of takes a moment. My son is, uh... Actually, one of the candidates. And that's why I speak out against most of the things he's running this year. His name is Abrek. He's, uh, he's new, young, but he's been anointed by the Red Council and you're telling me that my son, who I've spoke against for many years, and now I've come on to this side, is actually in over his head with a large conspiracy within the cloud tops. I would say it's beyond a large conspiracy. He kind of just looks down and rubs his forehead. So, I'm going to tell you something that I think... Only I really know. Say the rocks might be, uh, involved. The rocks have to be. There's no... Listen. I don't know anyone else that can transport the amount of people that are leaving Hexwell. To Andre. Up, up, up board. When we talked, when we, when we, uh, got into a fight with Jameer Crestfall... The guy who ran local pros. Yep. He had a letter with a seal of Tor Rocks on it. Did he, did he take that letter from him? Yeah, we read it. Did we? Yeah. But I still have that letter. We took almost everything yeah. from him. Oh, oh, shit. Can I have that for my evidence book? <laughs> Wrap up right here? Uh, <laughs> yeah, as we're just <laughs> talking about this conspiracy. <laughs> He's like, wait a minute. I think I got some for that. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, there's a bit of... there's a Yeah, then yeah. I... I had to go through my fucking notes, and I'm like, yeah, fucking, there's this letter and shit? There's a, there's some code in it, uh, there's a guy named Harold, it's written down, Harrod. Yeah. You know? I'm show him the letter. He looks at it. It's, uh, like, he waits you know a moment. Talking about? Yeah, I think so, let me see it just to make sure. Uh, hold on. It's, it, it, we don't have, like, the, the written down shit. Right. I have what I wrote down in my notes, which... Through it. No, you're fine. Um, note from Harold, uh, from a chapel in Audre. Uh, it was uh, is detailing that it pays five hundred to seven hundred old, uh, like per head right. per slave. Yep. Um, uh, the collectors. Nope, the collectors is the group who yep. was going around. They're mm -hmm. taking the children. Uh, they work with the crows. I know what you're talking about. And Darien rocks had seal approval from Tor rocks. Yep. Uh, that's all that I really mentioned now, in the letter. As you show him this, 
he rummages and you see from a pack that he has lying in the corner he turns and he grabs and you see him reach out this is magnus thing happening and he pulls out like another that. letter <coughs> this is a letter that my son got i took it from him early on when the red council approached him about being a representative and shortly after this letter was sent from the rocks region it was sent from a courier directly by the red council i thought it was odd i was still somewhat skeptical early on and what their intentions were with such a young candidate but they seemed to really want him so i took this letter and i read it and when i saw what it said I didn't know if I believed it. And he pulls it out and he shows you. And on it, it has another seal. But you notice this handwriting is different. You see that it says, Tor Rocks, leader of the Rocks region. Abrek Addo, please sincerely decline any representation of the Red Council. You do not know what you are getting yourself into. There have been many years, hundreds, and things have transpired that many do not know. Save yourself and your family the trouble and walk away while you can. And it is signed Torox. And as you both look at this, you notice that they are slightly different writings. He looks at it. I thought it was odd that the leader of the Rocks region would be warning my son of joining the Hex. Can I well, investigate the signature? Yeah, you look See, at like, which yep. one You look at it and more he, authentic? he keeps going on. I think that I thought, it, I thought it was propaganda at first, so I didn't want to Thank God show my one. son. They are different. You see that the one he has is definitely, um, I mean, you don't know which one's right and which one's wrong, but judging by the one that he has, the handwriting looks like, you know, like a doctor's or it's a little bit more refined, elegant, um, like years and years have been. Which one looks like it was signed by an older person? The one he has. That's why I was kind of getting like your dad signed it. <laughs> uh, for, uh, above him, we were fairly sure that the letter we had received, while it had towards seal, was actually from his, if I recall correctly. Yeah, this isn't written down anymore. That one's from him, though. But the signatures are close. Close. So, like, almost like Identical. they were taught by, like, the same person to write. Or just years. Or that of... person taught. Or it's just been that long. We know that Darian is his son. Yeah. So, can you forge your parents' signature? Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's close enough that this is bad. Right. So, as you look at it, he looks and he says, And judging by that letter you have there seems that someone's handing out letters approved by the rocks region that are not by Tor rocks's seal of approval so we might have a conspiracy that includes that is but Tor rocks's son someone in audrey as well as the red Hexel. council and if you're telling me that those are the ties to all three somehow we need to figure out who those three are you mentioned a duradel herit this red crows, or oh, where were they? The black crows? This sun, Darien rocks, you have associated with your letter, and you're telling me the Red Council is conspiring against the people and doing things of ill intent. And the only hardcore proof that we know exists is in the mind of a missing teeth boy. Then we need to find him. We know where he is. Is Bill getting there? That's a tell problem. Him where? We're compartmentalizing information, though, because I don't want him to be in danger. <sighs> he 
you kind of don't really have a way to help you so much with that. And if I did, I don't want to consider everyone here enemies or allies yet until more is out on the table, but do see things are kind of aligning. The thing you could do now here is spread these doubts to everyone. I don't know how we do that because Hey, is it? Oh. And he knows magical writing. Maybe we could uh, yeah. pay him a little bit of money, see if he could go to the town's chronicle and um, put some scripture spell on some of the writing. Maybe when they read it, it changes the text to something. Because he fuck this. Turn and look for him. He's just kind of standing about 25 feet over. Professor! He kind of motions over and then makes his way over. Only and I inform him. That's crap, so he looks happy. Uh, he looks. That's a, quite a lot to take in. Um, okay. So, you want me to do something with the newspaper? The Albazine Chronicle it it will go out in the morning, and um, I could try and go in there and uh, maybe cast some sort of spell or enchant some of the scriptures, now, but... What are, gonna, uh, what are we gonna say? Because I got a list of missing kids. This and list hasn't been updated. Listen, I can put letter. it on the front page, but it's gonna need to be somewhat believable. Do you have anything that is real proof? I think the letter... It, what about the letters? Yes. What can we do with them? We won't include that the authentic letter. Because that, even though they're related, we, we just want the incriminated. That one caused the question. Or that right now. That's over here yawning a storm. Physical evidence? <laughs> I'm I don't tired. Know <laughs> we have we have a list of missing kids. We have an eyewitness. And we have a girl who a letter from kidnapping. And a, that specifies how much. And a letter from Rocks about them buying kids. That will call into question the rest. Specifically. Um they there and it's them. Just that it's happening is already enough. The fact that to it's call happening. their authority into question. Like, we don't need to like specifically say the Red Council is selling kids. So the what's Red the Council. headline that I hide until the people start unfolding their paper and then it changes? What is it? Red Council deceives all working with Son of Rocks? Let us incriminate both? What? Red Council turns blind eye to kidnapping. In human trash. With the aid of someone. Do you sign it? Do you let them know? Who are you all as you see that rubber kind of looks? Good. Fuck this. You guys have a name? A group name or anything? We should probably come up with Well have a name. Never. You're in the club. Club. <laughs> We've been in the moon, so <laughs> dying. Funny. Not I over there not yet. Why not? We already have a fucking target on our back. All right, names That's are names. Happening. It doesn't matter. What matters is... Just, just sign it. M. Okay. 
people. I'll do this just because you seem to be doing the right thing. Fuck this. You see Thomas just kind of pull you aside. Are you in over your head? I don't see. I know you're strong and I know you have many talents, fuck this, but do you know what you're tangling yourself in here? We fail trying to do the right thing. Then take this. He kind of reaches over in his side pouch and he pulls out like a roll of scrolls with this red band around it. He hands it to you and in the middle you see this like long quill. Write on this. It's got many magical properties. There are 20 sheets here. Some of them, whatever you write, it'll just create. Not too powerful of items, but things that you need. I haven't tested it in what extents it does. Work with it. You can reuse some of the papers if you only use lesser magic. Uncommon or even rare items that you try and phone could fail. They could also be successful. If you try and create spells with this, it can work. As long as you are proficient, usually up to that level. It works for me up to that way, usually, because I understand the magic, but don't attempt to push the limits without possible repercussions. The magic and the ink that I've infused in that is from the Contravent's Halt. It only has what lies within that one feather tip, so use it wisely. He kind of pulls you back and gives you like a slight hug around your waist. Just be careful. And just keep doing what you know is right. You've always been a straight arrow. He lets you go back to the group. He kind of nods his head. I do the chronicle and um, I'll make sure it's done by tomorrow morning. <laughs> Ow. Oh, I can here. do that. I'll get some insights. Alright. Hit me with some insights. 17. Alright, who first? <laughs> who thought this is Professor <laughs> first? The, the, the Professor. Yeah, he seems to be honest. Like, he's gonna do what he's gonna do. That's next I'm doing. This guy. <laughs> He seems to still be on the fence, but you've presented quite a bit of actual evidence to sway at least his current opinion so he's slightly. Gone, he's gone from a supporter to like a more neutral. Exactly. Almost. It seems as if after speaking at one point, he wasn't maybe a supporter until his son got entangled and then became a pretty devout supporter due to that and now recently with your words so you kept that letter from your son i did and allowed him to proceed i thought it was propaganda from rocks i didn't um want his future crushed so quickly said that the the red council why was he a student the hexwell um, he wasn't, but, uh, he was working with a group of younger individuals creating some sort of inventive machine, and... Oh, no. With what you've told me, I'm hoping that it hasn't had to deal with Cassandra Vault and this Teldris, though... He, if it did, he probably wouldn't remember it. They've been shown to mind white people that work on their projects but like even if we find 
anyone that was a part of it, we also have to figure out how to recover that sealed off portion. Uh, then Which maybe... means they're fucking with things that made things like the fucking cursed memory that we're fuck talking about earlier. That's actually fucking out now. I'm freaking out more. You know when you <laughs> like, say like, that like... about a year ago when they came to him, he was sick for about a month. He was bedridden for about a week afterwards, and then came to was fine. But like, was he coherent? Somewhat, like... but. He couldn't really remember me. He was in a massive fever, and I didn't think anything of it. He came out of it, and I was just blessed, and uh, I thought he was just strong. You are a man who loves his son. I am. That is a relationship I have been conscious of. Like, uh, we have we have some children back. Recently lost a parent. Family is important. Something that I've been trying to work on. Thing that you've been working on, I would try and ease up. You know, need to talk to him. We know. Is there anybody famous for like mental magics that isn't associated with the Mega Council? Not that I know of. Any famous doctors? Supposed shamans in the Lost Force. But I'd probably be. I need to speak with him first and see what even he knows and what he'll even tell me. Maybe he knows more than he's leading on. I don't even know. Maybe he actually knows what's going on. I'm gonna like take like two blank pages out of this like conspiracy journal I have, real quick, and I'm like copy the. Letter. Okay. Like the letter he has in it, so I have gotcha. a copy of what it actually says. Because like I don't know the letters key, because he especially because he needs to send. It. Yeah, so that. Okay. Your son worked on project. And a copy of I'll give a copy of I'll give, I'll copy mine and give a copy of mine. I mean, what skills and talent does he? Um. He's very persuasive, very charismatic. He's never been afraid of crowds. He's always been able to stand in front of any person and just talk, tell them his true colors and wear them perfectly on his sleeve without faltering. This is very uh, much the trait that they sought after. They said they had ways of making him even more persuasive and charismatic. And in time, once he was elected, people would just be doing whatever he said. I'm just drinking beer out of my tanker of sobriety right perfect. now. Because I want to drink beer, but I don't want to get drunk. Doing <laughs> stuff. So it's like the perfect plus. politician. <laughs> Tread carefully. Don't lead on to because if if he is Texas, that is true. I'll show him one letter and see. Do you know see. how to cast spells? I don't. Okay, so do you have any money? Uh, a little bit that I have at my house. Why? Okay, we the uh, the best bet. Would be able to would be to buy a cheap scroll of tech magic, and you would know if he was under any active magical effects. Without actually, you'd only need to be within like thirty-ish feet of him. I 
identify could also do it. Those are those are two very cheap in comparison to like most spell scrolls. I'll see if and, Thomas can make me something. Yeah. You'd Those understand. Help. All right. Because that way you'd be able to tell if telling him would be a danger to you. You should figure out a way to break the magic first. Yeah, you can target you can, creatures. Target creatures. I looked it up. It's wild. You didn't know it either. The only reason I knew it is because I specifically looked it up. I was like, okay, yeah, never mind. <laughs> so so the, the very first line says you choose one object. No, and then it's and like then the the very, character. The, the very last line says if you instead touch a creature throughout the cast. I call that, oh, I call that the smite Thor hammer rule. Because I didn't know I played smite I, for like three weeks. I didn't know you Thor's hammer and smite. <laughs> when you saw me do it, he's like, what? Anyway. It's like you just teleported. Yeah. So that? anyway, at this point, <laughs> he kind of sits back. Starts gathering his things. I'm gonna go home and um, I'm gonna have to make a, a note of this. If there um, if there's anything else, you can find me here. I'm here most days, and uh, hopefully I can talk to Abrak and uh, see if I can. Get some information. I'll relay that back to Thomas and, um, yeah. Is there a courier service? Yeah, there is. Like, can I send a letter to somebody? Yeah. First what he... if we sent some of this proof to the guy who runs the storm chaser? Because even if they can't fight this storm right now, they probably, and they lost a bunch of guys. They would be the best at transporting information across Xwell. The leader of the works. No, he works. No, he works for the fifty-two. No, that's Givak. That's one of the captains. The leader. No, I want. I want to. I want Givak. Oh, yeah. Thunder Rider. Givak. Givak. Uh, there was a name in here or something like Guston Thunder yeah, Guston, Rider. Yep. And I was. <clears throat> I was like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. <clears throat> Guston. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, who I, that want, is. I want Givak. He was the guy that we were. Talking about. Yes. So Percy said that you were in town. Does that mean that you're not usually? Depends. Sometimes wherever the whispers of uh, good intel take me, I usually head towards if it has to do with the political regiment. But um, most of the time you're in the area. Most of the time I'm here, especially with the storms. I um, I'm hoping to make it to a media though, so I can be there for the political gathering. Plus side about the storm is the kidnapping of kids had calmed down. Let's hope if that's... Or it could have gotten worse. Who oh, knows? Another thing. <laughs> the meeting in the media. They did say that there might be other representatives from uh, Geom. And maybe even, if we're lucky, they might be sending someone from Audre and Rocks, though I doubt they'll show. But Geom being one of the new... Uh, you know, cloud tops. We are hoping that they will show up and show their support for. Well, let's just hope if they want any of our inventions but to be sent. This could also be an actual power grab, and like fucking baby rocks prince shows up, and shit actually hits the fan. We don't know who's in control, though. We don't know if it's like a partnership between them. All three parties that we know exist. Well, I know that the representative or, of Geom is Rovantana. Rovantana, you know that name? Is he the one who ran from the pass? Look at my notes. No, Who's Tanner. Tanner Tanner's the one that you guys met with Pug in the very first city very, when you guys went to the Cloud Tops. Yep. Didn't do a lot. Yeah, he no, wasn't he approved by his people and he was yeah. trying to win their sway and it seemed as if he had like some resentment towards the people because they didn't like him so he was trying to prove a point yeah, by... he was competing with like Fuck. an old famous man yeah well it seems like pug undermined everything he did because he was known as the lapidary so everybody went to pug for everything but when he was in power so he kind of undermined him and it seems now he's geom's representative 
Well, none of us know him besides fuck this. Orm knows him. Orm knows him? Oh, uh, yeah, no. Orm doesn't know him. You would have known oh. of him. Yes. <laughs> he would know of his name, but he wouldn't know. He, he was with Cassandra, and he would know of the name. Not have met him. But yeah, fuck this would be the only one that has actually ever met him. <clears throat> wow. And Vlad when Magnus died. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> then we have to introduce Ad like that. Oh yeah, Vlad's dad. We made him like the antagonist of his character. So anyway. No, it would fit. No, no. Oh, You're God. gonna kill his dad? Oh, God. So Vlad needs to come back so he can kill another player's dad. Oh, I, I, nice. Oh, or he killed my mom. You got some daddy issues? I think no. No? He's got nephew issues. Oh, okay. Alright. I don't know if I want to kill your nephew though. Now at this point. I'm pretty chill with, with, with our family. Uh, yeah. Robert well, grabs his things and he starts getting ready to head off. One last thing. You travel frequently. Uh, sometimes. How do you travel? I have simple carriage, but um, I usually use the airship that uh, comes through just north of town. There's, or actually it's south, excuse me. There's a bend south of Albazine, maybe uh, half a mile back, maybe... Actually, it's a little farther than that, but um, it's quite some distance. And then you go up this slight mountain range, and on it is a large airship port. It's a dock. I usually take it to wherever I usually need to go, get dropped off along the way, and uh, that's how I usually travel. It only goes one way, though. It does, though where we're located... Um, usually make it back and hitch a ride, but with the storms, I haven't usually traveled north in some time. So I haven't been needed in the airships. Potentially. You could do a medium. Now, at this point, uh, what, what was the question? Uh, would we be able to make it yeah. in, a day, in a day for the meeting? Um, meeting's in two days. Oh, I thought you said one. He doesn't know. He's not sure. But the issue is, you guys know this the meeting is two the days, perfect so. time for us to get his nephew without the Red Council going where we Because they're dealing with all of this. Now would be the time to secure evidence to fuck the route council because it'd catch him. I don't know any. Cause letter wouldn't even guard. They just couldn't out it. Yeah. They have too many things to deal with to specifically focus us right now. Thomas still here? No. no. Thomas left. <clears throat> No. Are we still here? Nope, he just left. Cool. Cool. Now, you guys are here about another couple minutes. What are you guys doing? Uh okay. yeah. Uh where could I buy a, a magical drinking boat? Or a hot air balloon basket. Mm. Or anything that could fit for could these be on clearance? You guys, you guys letter, could get uh, you guys could get a boat in town. Yeah. Um, like a canoe esque type, like you had before, almost like a rowboat. That'd be the closest thing you'd be able to get. Could I get something that shrink down to pocket size? For a penny, maybe it'd be pretty expensive. Um, are we talking like five hundred gold? No. More? Yes. Ugh. Just for the enchantment. Boat's cheap. I could, you guys could probably get a boat for anywhere from like 20 to 25 gold. I think, gold -ish. I think a rowboat can and, I, and the PHP is like. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Could I, try, could I get somebody to turn a boat into a patch? Yeah, that's what we're. That's what I'm saying. Like okay. that enchantment process would probably be. Oh, that would be the expensive part. Yeah, it's oh. that's gonna be like two grand. Oh no, I meant I meant like just a boat. You ever play Final Fantasy? Where mm -hmm. they just have, that's what I was talking about. I was talking about a single use 
patch. Well, that's what those patches are, technically. Yeah, yeah, yes. No, yeah, that's an entirely different thing. How I was about, talking how about, about instead of a boat, we just get a bunch of, like, blow-up survival rafts? Let's say this. <laughs> just because just because the rules for a specific item when a robe wouldn't be that expensive. I'll say you could get a patch probably enchanted for a boat for let's say like 250 gold. I don't know for that. Can it be a patch that we can refill with boats? <laughs> I'll say it's a it's a it's a patch that is like a hole plug and you can just reuse the patch. So you the use patch the patch. Like a Pokeball, you're like it boat. It boat goes. Boat. You <laughs> rip the patch off. Boat. Rip it off. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. Lose it's the got, patch. It's got Velcro on the back. Basically. <laughs> okay. Lose Why the patch. Rip the patch. patch okay. Okay. That's gone. That's, that's, or, or if like the you know the enchantment gets scribbled off. Gone. Okay. Other than that, you're good. Okay. Yeah. Instead of a boat, can it really just be a? Fucking hot air balloon basket. What a theme sure, two hundred and fifty gold. Theme it however the fuck you want. Yeah, play with <laughs> I want to try to find Fucking a map good. of Hexwell. All right, just All right. like like okay. a standard like traveler map, not like what he's doing. Right. Like just like, like the capital. Oh. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah. I got it. That'd be, that'd be like two gold. That does, that if it's possible, one of Andre as well. But I'm saying we're not in Andre. Wait, aren't there like shitty match points? The only thing you see that has to do with any of the other regions um, where we're at this like cartography shop is they do have some of Andre, though they're more like you notice they're all different. So just by looking, you know, there's cartographers that have tried. To map them out, and you have no idea which one's correct. You see a couple have the city Panal located on there, and it doesn't seem like many others. A lot of others have different names that don't seem to coordinate with any other maps. Um, you kind of look around. Uh, you can maybe grab a few for a couple silver. There's plenty. Can I ask the um, shopkeeper the, it, which one's like the most like? Yeah, this is. He, he just goes over and he's like, "Huh." So I'll be, I'll be with him. All right, yeah, you guys are there looking at him. He goes over. The, those are brought in all the time from supposed travelers that have uh, unlocked what they consider to be the region's mapping. Um, many have been trying to do it for years, but with the cloud and the fog, it's a hard thing to do. So. Is the capital at least accurate? Uh I see. For Hexwell, yes, but anything outside of um, the Hexwell region, that's a toss up. Can I see your geom maps? He kind of pulls a couple down. We got only three. The region is a little bit new. Um, he hands them over to you, and you notice that most of them are completely kind of barren. They don't even have like regions drawn. And you notice that there's a couple locations. You see Northros, you notice that there's uh, Aldris. You see the Stone Bridge Town. You see Red Ridge. Would I be able to do some kind of check to see like what's the most accurate? Well, I'm looking for. Um, well, I don't care what you're. Right. <laughs> 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 Give me a. Uh, I'll just buy a handful of those Audrey maps. Okay, I'll just say a gold, and you get about ten random maps that are from Audrey. Um, when I get there, I'm like, okay. Give me play. a intelligence check. I'm gonna do math. <laughs> I rolled a one. Uh, a dirty one. I rolled a this? two. How about this? I'll give you advantage one. because you've been there. Because you would be able to discern some of the things, you know, yeah. you, you'd have traveled, so you would know at I mean, least. We literally went from south right, to west. Right, that's what I'm north. saying. You know that whole south we to west north bend all the way up. So you would know almost okay, like a, a third. An okay, so you look at the three, two are just complete fucking fake. One, though, looks pretty detailed. You notice that it doesn't really have a lot of the cities. But it's got a couple locations that seem to be marked for like large mineral deposits, and you see the scale cavern actually located on there. And knowing that, it's got to be pretty you know recent because that's only happened within the last you know six months. So seeing that, you look, that catches your eye. You probably want this map. You sit down with it for maybe a couple hours. You probably sure. be able to. He just looks. Oh, that one. Pfft. 
No one wants those. Uh, five copper. Oh, I have no, 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 zero money. Jesus. Oh. Yeah, I at I least have, have like some gold. I forgot about that. I, I have, have no more platinum. Zero. I still have two hundred gold. zero copper. Here's, but, here's five, but five here's platinum. Silver. Here you go. Make Does it, don't you have like 80 platinum? It was 59. I have 59 platinum. Oh, yeah, I gave sorry. him 59 platinum. I give him one of my silver because I have five, well, four silver. That's Cheap the asses. last of the 16 pounds of platinum I had. I, no, I, wanted, I wanted to go to a map shop, but I didn't have any. Right, oh, I'm going to give you five platinum. You have 50 gold piece. All right, cool. Here you go. Okay, so you guys grab yeah, your maps. I'm going to exchange my 250 gold for 25 platinum. <laughs> down weight costs. It's probably a good, good idea. All my platinum is in the back holding, so that adds weight. I'm not going to be carrying around. You and I'm going like that. Like, yeah. You guys are on your way out. You look and he says, uh, do me again. Uh, you guys walk out and as you turn, you see on the shop because you guys never fucking ask names or look at shop names or anything or inspect. It's I just ask for a map. It's I know, like, so map go here. Um, no, you look and it's it's Cardi's Grittos. So this is this is the cartography shop. I would say you would want to know this specifically. Um, they they have some shops around. You've seen similar shops. It seems as if they are almost like a Barnes and Nobles for you know random maps and stuff like that. You guys make your way out. You guys reconvene together. And as you guys walk out, um, give me a perception check, everybody. Oh, perception. Five nineteen. <laughs> Ooh. You two, twenty-three in life. So all three of you, um, you guys notice immediately, kind of in the crowd as it's about midday now. You notice that there's these green and teal with almost like a yellowish embellishment. Um, two individuals that are kind of walking towards you. You wait a few moments and then you see the female-ish one kind of pull back and you see black with a white stripped hair and it's Arlanda. She kind of looks around and then do you have a moment that we can speak? And she kind of nods over to one of the nearest alleyways and she kind of just starts walking. You guys fall. You guys make your way over. Orion's with her and he kind of looks at the end of the alleyway and kind of keeps guard for a moment. She grabs your attention. There's a meeting in a media two nights. I don't know what your agenda is, but I know that many high ranking individuals are going to be there from not only Hexwell, but also from Geom. And I heard that a Duradel Herit is going to be attending as well from Andre. He supposedly is going to be there accompanied by Marcus Yorwood of the Yorwood here in Hexwell. He shall be staying for two to three nights and he is going to be accompanied as his host. Now, if we think that this is what we want, that means that Audre is left wide open. You say that you're- Oh, we also have some physical evidence for you. We can speak of that in a moment. I just wanted to say We that. just know that he is heading here now. If we are going to do anything, you guys need to act. You either come to the party, assemble yourselves, and we divulge as much information from Durda Harit as we can in some manner, trying to find what he's doing, who he's working with, and what his true intentions are, or you all go now. You find Jacophine en route. Head to Percy's. Go to New Wall. You can fly them to the peaks. You need to convince them. And his group of the flybys. Of your good intentions. And see if he can get you to Audre. It will take you a day or two probably to get there. He has the mechanisms to fly you there. Only if he trusts you, though. He will probably give you some deed, some small quest to earn your trust. Do that. 
Make your way there. Find your nephew. And upon doing so, figure out how to stop these storms and what's happening with these orphans and all these individuals going missing. Figure out the crows, what their attachment is here in Hexwell. And make your way back before he knows you've gone and taken him. We need Teldris alive. Do you understand? Okay. I'm also going to give her all the evidence I have. Now. Including what... The Hex God, I think, are on to us. I'm organizing papers. They saw us in the media. We know that Pug Jameson is there, held capture. Media? A media. Underneath the city, they have some sort of tunnel network that we believe is running underneath not only a media, but possibly other cities as well. Wait, like Pug, like the Moonlight Marauder, this Magnus talking. Yes. Moonlight, like, Moonlight the Lapidary. Lapidary. The... That famous guy? Yes. Fuck. And the importance of him right now so is that with the elections coming up, we fear that some of these gems that are coming out of Dolan's and whatever is found in Geome is going to need to be cut. And whoever comes within this next electional power, if they have the lapidary, they'll be able to cut whatever gems they need or whatever powers they need. And we know with whatever power is brewing from that scale cavern and that red gem, that it must be important. She kind of looks around. Now go. And that's where we're going to end today's session. We'll pick up there next week. There you go. Have a good uh, one, dude. Okay. You guys are... Well, no, you, you, she's still there. Uh, she's telling you to go. She's in a hurry. You can tell that her and Orion are kind of in a quick motion. How are we getting back from a, a different kind? She just looks at you. You're going to need to maybe talk to Percy about that one. Okay. Third Percy patch. <laughs> no distance needed. Just yeah, like, worldwide. I don't worldwide need, Percy you patch. can't just have an infinite... She kind of just looks and smiles and just says, Let's hope Percy's got something up his sleeve. Boy, I hope. Now. And then she looks at Orion. She looks at you guys. And then we'll pick up there. If you guys want to talk next week, we can. If not. I got to talk about Magnus. <clears throat> what was the yeah. cartographer's? Good job. Cardi's Grido. G-R-I-D-O. Cardi's like C-R-T-R-Y. Or C R or C A R T Y G R I D O. Playboy Cardi? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. G R I D Y? G R I D O. Cardi Grittos. But yeah. There next week. Mm, 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 mm. Not a good session.